Back to the action here. So since I'm hyped for geese, I'm playing KOF music. The stick is still broken, but I'm gonna do Steve. Steve Fox. Since everyone is hype on this Taisei stuff right now. And since I realized I got fucked up by two Steve players recently. And I realized that uh, without Marduk around and with Steve's new moves, his new up forward two, I can't play him the way I used to play him. He's uh, That new up forward two changes the matchup so much. Based on the way I used to play him. Because the way I used to play against Steve, I never had to worry about anything when I backdash. Any sort of like mid catching me, whatever, I could just backdash, do a high crush low poke on him all fucking day for free. And his old up forward suit would never reach me. And Marduk's down four, he couldn't sidestep it. So, it just became this whole thing where I would just down four Steve over and over again. And then the moment he ducked, launch his ass and I would kill him. Can't really do that against Steve anymore, so... I'm gonna have to actually learn how to really fight Steve now. Instead of just learning how to fight him in one specific matchup. Uh, I'll take this to the fucking... I'm, I'm wondering if I wanna go right into a wall stage right now or not. I wish the wall stages were a little bit bigger, but... What the fuck ever. I do have the starting soon still up, I know. I ain't know. I always forget. It's been a week, man. It's been a week. I gotta get back into the groove, you know? I'll get there. I'll get there. I had rage on for some reason. Uh, everything else looks okay, whatever. Alright. Yeah, this shit. Has a really good hitbox. What he so he has you know the orbital punch right. Before he would just went up forward too. It was a launcher and it was a mid. But he would jump and swing upward. It had like no fucking range. He would swing with his elbow too. It had like no fucking range. And then they they fixed that with the uh, with this up forward two shit. Uh, it's unsafe though. So people call it orbital punch, but it's not really an orbital. It's orbitals are safe. Whatever. Uh, yeah, Steve's movement. Oddly enough, I don't. I think his regular sidestep is just kind of average. But when you add the sway, that's when he gets like an above average sidestep. No, that move is nowhere near as cheap as Josie's Butterfly Edge. It's negative fourteen. It's an easy punish if you're used to it. I'm not used to it yet, so I'm not used to punishing Steve at all yet. Honestly, like I let a lot of shit go, like. um... This shit, I never punished that properly. I never punished that shit properly. I gotta punish it proper. I let him get away with this. It can duck canceled, even though that's like not plus on block. I freeze up after that because I forget you can't swing hot. So anyway, Steve. For those of you that don't know, I'm sure everyone knows by now. Steve is a counter hit character primarily, which means he excels at getting a life lead and holding on to it while chipping away at the opponent making them afraid of swing and shit and uh, the primary reason is because of this back one Boom. I don't know the combo but that's a counter hit jungle starter 13 frame high and the thing about it is oh but Manny there's magic fours that have more range and are faster why is Steve such a big deal well that's because he could do a million fucking things off of back one it's not just back one and that's all he has it's back one flicker jabs. It's back one, uh, back one two. It's back one duck cancel. That you know flicker. It's a duck cancel. It, he he can do a lot of shit. You, you know it's basically like. Not only is it um what is it on block? It says here. It says negative fourteen, but that's not really true. Uh, the Tekken bot ignore the Tekken bot for this move. The point is because of all this shit, he has attached to back one. You can't really swing at him after you block a back one, or rather, you have to be very careful. So that's what I know about Steve up front. Uh, Sonic Fang's alright, that's just uh, his 14 frame punisher. And it has good range. So now that he got that out of the way, oh yeah, like his, bi his big weakness is he doesn't have like a super dangerous low. He this is a really good low poke, 14, right? 
uh, what is it on block? Negative 13, yeah. So, like, his low, you know, his, uh, his comeback potential is, like, kind of weird. This has a ton of range, though, I know that. Uh, and then he has, like, that shit, which is, any, which is not even a natural combo on normal hit. Low mid. And he can cancel into the mid. The big scary low for him is down back 3-2, but he needs to be right in your fucking face. And it's low high. Like, the moment you, he steps back slightly, like, one dash, one back dash. He's already, you're already out of there. One back dash, and you're out of there. Right? And then, um, I don't know if it's, well. Okay, it's negative seven, but it's low high. So if you duck the low, you could, uh, launch punish him. If you block the low, you duck the high, and then you launch punish him. So that, it's a big risk. It's very threatening at the wall, though. So that that's really what, what, what the big Steve weakness is that I know of. Now they got that out of the way. Now let me actually get to the move lists. Which uh, I got here on the side like always at RB Norway. So, you know, like usual, one jab, ten frame startup, plus one on block, plus eight on hit. Usual. And then he has a 1-1. One, one. Okay, that's a natural combo because his uh, ja actual jab punch is 1-1-2, one, one, right? But 1-1 uh, one, one is uh, plus 3 on hit and negative 3 on block. And then he has uh, the ability off of his 1-1 one, one to weave left or right. 1-1-3 one, one, to weave left, 1-1-4 one, one, to weave right. See? It goes to weave. And then weave has a bunch of moves in it. Uh, the data here when he goes into weave is he's actually quite negative. Negative nine it says. And he's even negative on hit. The thing about weave is that it's evasive, so you have to be careful what you swing at him with. So like No. See? So you gotta go mid. Yeah. Uh, oh, when you swing at Steve, you always have to be cognizant of being very careful when you swing high. He has like a billion high crushes. A billion. Everything is leaked into a fucking high crush against his character. So you always have to be very careful of that. Uh, it doesn't seem like weave is in, uh, the weave built into that is much for sidestepping. But um, by the way, I keep calling it sway. It's weave. I'm sorry. This is really a weave, not sway or sway right. I don't know. I lose track. But anyway, 1-1-3, one, 1-1-4 one, 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 is a weave. And then it crushes highs either way. And it might make certain mids whiff depending on the angle, because that's how this kind of shit works. He's leaning to his side. He's not just ducking. He's also leaning and slightly sidestepping. See, I'm off axis. I'm off axis. The more I keep doing this, the more I go to his back. <clears throat> By the way, I think this used to start his uh, instant kill juggle in Tekken 5.0. Because uh, if I recall right, it wouldn't knock you away. It would stun you, and then he would go into the uh, fucking um, Dempsey roll, and he would cancel the Dempsey roll, and then you would beat the shit out of them on the side, and it would take off a whole life bar. Especially if walls were involved. Alright, so this is actual 10 frame jab on 1 1 2. Plus 4 on hit. I never noticed this, but it actually pushes back quite a bit. Alright, you still have to tip a jab range, though. So if you swing right away and they don't move at the tip of jab range, but you could you could pretty much move after getting hit by this. So I never knew that. <laughs> um, and this also goes into the weave. One one two three and one one two four. Now it doesn't say the frame data here. That's a weird thing to test. Wow, so this is actually a straight up frame trap. I you don't even I don't even start the jab there. I don't know how fast that shoulder is though. Um, that shoulder is 14 frames, and he beat out my jab, so he's at least at plus five. So you definitely want to be careful of 
swinging at something like that. My vote would go to if you're fighting against Steve, backdashing after that, but then he probably has something to chase you down. But it's not going to be a low, is it? Uh, if you're the aggressive Steve Flair, you're the one playing Steve, keep in mind that this is this into the uh, weave. Seems like you have some pretty good uh, frame data to go with that. That's also being me. That's 15 frames. So yeah, he's definitely at huge plus frames after this hits you into the into the weave. Right. Oh, by the way, one one two jails. I just tested it there. I couldn't duck it. So this jails. Good jab string. On block, uh, let me try to swing at it on block. Yeah, it's pretty bad on block. The shoulder was faster, right? So don't fall for this gimmicky shit if you're fighting against Steve on block. That's a 60 frame uh, mid, and I'm interrupting. But on hit, it's legit. So if you're Steve, you can force the weave mix-ups on hit. As a matter of fact, that actually might be a better option than just taking this and not doing anything. Depending on the opponent you're fighting, you can force further mix-ups. OJ Simpson? Yeah, I heard. I read the newspaper. Or the cover, at least. So next, you have 1-1-down-1. One, one, one. I don't know why that's there, because 1-1-2 one, one, jails. So I'm not sure what the purpose of that is. Let's set that one more time. Yeah, that jails. So, I don't know. Maybe if you want to, uh, it helps you uh, work in the mix up of 1 1 better. Because plus 3 and uh, on hit, minus 3 on block. So, you could keep pressing buttons after it because he has that mid built in, right? And then you could hold back to go to flicker. Flicker stance. Uh, according to this, the flicker stance on hit is plus six. The flicker stance transition. On block, it's zero. So, zero on block flicker stance is pretty good. I don't know if he has a ten frame option or flicker though. Not yet, at least. And then, uh, one, one, down, one, back, down, back. You can cancel the flicker stance. Go to flicker stance and then cancel it. Which actually gives you f better frame data than just doing it regularly. Like, going like this back into neutral. According to this, is negative six. Which the bot is not doing a good job showing. Now saying zero. This bot's crazy. There you go. Negative six. And uh, if you cancel this without any frames wasted, go into flicker and cancel it. Go into flicker by holding back and then canceling it with down back. You are actually only at negative two instead of negative six. Which is not showing here. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to test that. Does he have a 12 frame? He do. He do have a 12 frame. Oh, he went just 1 1 down one, right? <clears throat> Alright, so it would be. But he would recover crouching, wouldn't he? He would recover crouching, so a 13 frame should exchange. With the wall standing one, right? This is a really awkward input. So this is what makes Steve a weird execution character, these cancels. I don't know how important this specific cancel is. It might be very important for juggles. But he has like a lot of this going on. If you, if you want to utilize it to its fullest, I'll get this eventually. All right, I don't know if that was as fast as possible, but all right. Yeah, that looks too slow.
Well, all right, I'm gonna be here all day at this rate, just trying to get this one canceled down to test this frame data on it. So I don't, uh, you know, it might be unreasonable to expect you to get it that fast unless you work your way up to it. And whether that's worth doing or not, I don't know yet. Maybe I'll know when I get a better idea of what his full move list is. But either way, it's a way to make one one stronger by itself. So, and he also do it off of a, a single jab too. One down one, one down one's the same thing, and one one, uh, one one down one, and one down one's the same thing. You go to flicker, and, you know, as a cancel. You might need that for certain uh, wall combos or juggles. It says I'm offline to Twitch. Twitch fucking up. Come on, Twitch. Oh, this thing says it's still on. Alright. So. This stuff might be something that people use like stuff for all combos and for juggles in general. Uh, what else we got here? We got one, two. Minus two on block, plus six on hits. So it's not, uh, I think one, twos are usually negative one. Negative two instead. But then he has one, two, three, and one, two, four to go into the weaves. And just like before, this adds two frames of recovery on block and on hit. Go figure. Uh, was it? One, one. Yeah, except for one, one, two. One, one, two was the only situation where I had to do that. So yeah, one, two, three is negative four, and one, two, four is also negative four, and they're both uh, on block. And they're both plus four on hit. Kind of hurt, same shit. How strong are these options? Uh, that's supposed to be 15, right? Yeah, okay. Okay. So, yeah, that's definitely negative four. I beat him out uh, with the jab, but I, uh, my 12 frame lost out completely, so had it an 11 frame, we would have exchanged. Next, we got 1 2 1, which is a natural combo, it's not. So. Is that a counter combo? Yes, it's a counter combo. Does that mean 1 2 1 2 still is a counter hit? Okay, no, it's just 1 2 1. So 1 2 1 is a counter hit screen. Uh, I don't know if it jails. It does, it jails. It jails, it's a counter hit string. It's negative 10. Yeah, Steve is probably going to be a, at least a two-parter, my friend. At least a two-parter. One, two, three is negative three also. Pretty freaking good. And then he could uh, go into peekaboo off of that. Yeah, all right, so negative three on block, one, two, one, without the peekaboo. Plus three on hit. With the peekaboo, we uh, recover two frames faster. Negative one on block. <laughs> uh Plus five on a hit. Is Peekaboo one his fastest move? Alright, if it is, then uh, exchange for 13 frames back one. Okay, so let's test this. Alright. Maybe I was slow. Wait, yeah, it says negative one, right? Let me double check that. One, two, one forward is negative one. Okay. Bring him out with jabs too. Unless Peekaboo, I'm going by the frame data bot saying that Peekaboo one is uh, 12 frames. 14. I'm guessing that 12 frames is as fast as option. Match it. Beat that out. Right, we exchanged. Wait. So I don't know. It should be it should exchange with 13, it changes with 14. So maybe it's negative three or I'm one frame slow. It's hard to tell. But uh I'm guessing it's negative three because I recorded it a bunch of times. I'll record it one more time just in case. Uh, yeah, I mashed that shit real hard. Man. Yeah, no, I'm still beating him clean by uh, Sonic Fang exchanges. Yeah, see? I wonder if he could get a juggle in that situation. He might. Mm. 
That combo. Alright, not even getting that shit is so cancelable. I don't know what he would pick up with, but he, he got the stomp tree there at least. You buy a, a, a off of exchange with a Sonic fan, he might get a full combo, whatever it may be. I'm trying to do the down 2 1, but he cancels that shit so fast. Well, whatever. I'm getting ahead of myself. So yeah, that's probably negative uh, two instead of one. And then one two one back goes to flicker, of course. According to this, same frame data. According to this, let's test. Flicker jab, twelve frames, right? There we go. Well. I don't know if my recording of the Peekaboo two, uh, 1 was slow, but we definitely exchanged here, so this is negative 1. 13 frame exchange with a 12 frame, right? Boom, see? And then, just like usual, you can cancel Flicker with down back, and uh, RB Norway is saying that the frame gate is actually the same in that instance as just a regular ass 1 to 1, so I guess there's no real reason to do that. Unless it does something for troubles. Alright, so 1 to 1 also goes into the weaves. One two one three, one two one four. Um, four is the shoulder, but that's fourteen frames, right? All right, this is supposed to be negative six on block, zero on hit, so uh, not great. Let's see. Change with Sonic Fam. <laughs> Alright, well, anyway. So he's got that. Zero on hits, which includes counter hit, of course, and then it all combos on counter hit, so remember that. Negative six on blocks, so uh, eh, that seems kind of whatever to me, unless it's for combos. Uh, yeah, no, Raven. Raven, I, don't, I can't imagine Steve being longer than Raven. Unless I keep getting stuck in these fucking vortex of testing stupid shit. What Steve has? What's, what does he have going on here? Yeah, nah. I mean, we, we're already at the throws, right? So, right here. 113. So, yeah, he's going to be a while, but I don't think he's going to be as long as Raven. Well, then again, what, what, what might make him long is he has all these cancels, right? Um, Raven actually didn't have as many cancels as I thought. It was more like she had these strings that, like, had different branches. Steve has that going on too, as you can see. Look at this one one. This, I just went over this stuff. One one two, one one down one, and shit like that, right? Um, I'm assuming that once I figure out, there's gonna be a gen like a general like once I start to see oh back to go into flicker, forward to go into peekaboo, and then back and that to go to flicker and down back to cancel the flicker, you know, uh, and then uh, whatever the string is, it's a three or four for the weaves. There's gonna be a similarity in the frame data. I'm thinking. That seems to be the case so far, where it's like adding two frames here and there, ticking away two frames, depending on what he does. So, I think with the more I get used to this, it's going to be uh, consistent, I think. I hope. I hope they don't do weird shit like, oh, in this specific string, he's going to be at plus five. He's going to add five more frames instead of the two from before. I don't know. We'll find out together. The Raven back turn stuff wasn't as complicated as I thought it would be. The only thing I know about Raven from back turn is if you're fighting against her, the only thing you need to know is that as long as she's not negative 10, she always has a back turn counter as an option. I, I don't know if I tested if it worked on elbows, so elbows or knees or whatever. But her counter activates on on frame one, so from back turn. So that I know. Anyway, uh. Oh yeah, and she has a eight frame back turn jab, like most people. So we got one two one into the cancels, and then we got the good old one two one two, one two one two, uh, which doesn't combo on counter hit, right? I tested this before. So the thing about that is, it's really as uh, uh, last digit deterrent 
to stop people from mashing after the jab string, right? You got one, two, one, two, one, bam, and they press anything to get wall splat, right? And since one, two, one jails, I don't think it's really a counter hit tool in that sense. Because you can't. I'm gonna guess that you cannot mash anything in between. Yeah, see? You can, I can't mash anything. It's just one, two, one jails. So that's just a, a, a last, uh, you know, I think so. It's like stop moving, stop mashing after after this one, two, one spray. That's really what it is. And it's a good one, too. The only thing is, it's uh, negative 10. So you can punish it. Uh, if you're coming in from far away, I'm gonna guess that the third hit connecting, at least on counter hit, will make the fourth hit guaranteed. That's just my guess. Right? Let's see. Uh, gotta space it. One, two, three, four. See? There you go. The third hit counter hit if you're coming in from space. And it's only negative 10. And now uh, that's another common thing about Steve, you gotta know. He's, uh, he's not super punishable on block. Even when it seems like he is, it's not, you know, it's not as bad as a lot of other characters. Like, the worst thing he has on block that's, uh, outside of maybe some of his lows is, like, negative 14, this shit, shit like that, you know? You can rarely block, like, uh, launch, launch him for a block move. Maybe this, I don't know. That's negative 14. That's negative 14, see? Anyway, we'll get there. So yeah, one two one two, good string. It used to be a more fucked up string in 5.0. I think the whole thing in 5.0. Now he did the whole thing in 5.0. If I'm not mistaken, combo on counter hit, but it was a counter hit launcher. It ended with a one two one uppercut, and then he would get launched. If I'm not mistaken, it's been a while. Anyway, um, he also has one two one down two. Uh, and then if you hold down, there's something. You just recovered ducking, I guess. Frame data is the same regardless. Uh, so they changed this. This is down back to the same data, right? This move has been changed quite a bit. First of all, it's less punishable than it used to be. Uh, it's like edge case seeable. I was at a point in Tag 2. I don't know if it's the same startup. It's just 26 frames. Uh, but I was at a point in Tag 2 where I, I got kind of used to seeing it a bit because I was fighting against a lot of Steve players. So I'm not going to say I was blocking a reaction all the time, but... Uh, now I, I can't see this shit to save my fucking life. You can put a gun on my head and be like, Manny, you got five chances to block that. Um, you might as well put me in the fucking dirt right there. Uh, but yeah, you if you get a file out of Steve players that have used this, you will start to see it eventually. So if you're Steve, think about that. Don't rely on this too much, maybe. Or rely on it, I don't know. Do you? It's only negative 12 on block. So it used to be, I think, negative 14 or negative 13. Uh, and before he used to knock down, so I guess the trade-off is on making it less bad on block, assuming I'm right, uh, is that it doesn't knock down. So that's a nerf, but it is good damage for a low 21, that's solid damage. And you, it puts him at plus one, the coin to tech him out, according to RB Norway, he's at, uh, what the fuck is it, plus two to plus three. Forces crouch. So let's see which one it really is. Flicker and peekable stuff. Is why I don't bother with this guy. It's not as complicated as it seems, no. It's not. It's really not. I, I know that I'll struggle with it, but like I don't. It, it feels like something that you don't have to put that much time to get used to. It, it really does. Uh, outside of the juggles, the cancels into the wild man, which he doesn't even need that anymore. There's no bound. You don't need to do the wild man while standing cancel. The ducking cancel to fucking while standing one too. That's wild man. Um, unless you're gonna floor break, you know. Alright, so I was gonna test what is the frame data on this. Alright. Oh wait. Oh yeah, I'm recovering crouching. Let me do 12 frames. So that's I, I really like that with down back two, you could uh regardless of or like one two one down two, however you go into down down back two. Uh, that's what we're going to. I like that he has the option of recovering, standing, or crouching with the same frame data. I think that's cool. Um, right, so that's, uh, what am I testing? Oh, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, he's at a plus two. So, the frame data bot is wrong. It says plus one. He's at plus two for sure. Unless you space it, maybe.
It's my 11 frame move exchanging with... Wait, sorry. No, he's at plus one. I'm sorry, I fucked up. He's at plus one. Yes. <laughs> that, that's a 12 frame move I'm having him do, and I'm doing a while standing 11 frame move and we're exchanging. He's at plus one. Sorry about that. So RB Norway is wrong. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can get the second frame to hit. It says active one out of two, so this has two active uh, frames. I think a lot of people drop C when they realize he's got some of the most droppable combos in the game. <laughs> yeah, his, his juggles are kind of rough. That's why I keep saying, I don't think these cancels are going to be mainly for juggles. You keep hearing me say that over and over again because I knew that coming in. I never really practiced D before, like at all. So I don't like know much about how to do them other than hearsay from the past. But anyway. So he has 1-2-1 one, one, down. Oh, sorry. 1-2-1 one, 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 down. Do it, damn it. One, two, one, down. So there you go. Thank you, sir. He's had this since 5.0, maybe in 4. I don't know. I didn't really play Tekken 4 that much. At least I didn't know about Tekken back then. But yeah, that down to same frame data as this. So. Actually, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, the bot. Okay. Yeah, still plus one. Uh, does that knock down on counter hit? It do. Oh shit, Neil Gio about the Coliseum music. When it knocks down like that, I think he gets something for free. He might get another one for free. Yeah, he might. You see the way it hit him? <clears throat> I'm pretty sure he gets something for free in that situation. No, you don't. <laughs> Unless I dash. I know he gets... Uh, that into the albatross down to is it? Right. How you do albatross? Oh. Yeah, I think that's guaranteed. So maybe uh, the counter hit is albatross down to is guaranteed. Maybe not. That looks like I can definitely block that. Looks like he's dancing. <laughs> That's in mid end game shit. Anyway. Mm, I tried to do a slight dash. That might be guaranteed. Well, not guaranteed. That doesn't hit grounded. That might be. It just might be really good okay. Uh, let's see if I try to get, if I try to get up and that hits me. That that's really good, okay. Which is the next best thing if you don't get a guaranteed follow up. No. Oof. Do a deeper dash. Well, if there's nothing guaranteed mid-stage, there's definitely going to be something guaranteed near the wall. Not that you'll be seeing this situation very often, but you should be using the stomp. See, like right here, it'll probably be... Because I can't hold back to escape it. So, he, he probably gets worse than that shit, man. Oof, don't get up in that situation. <laughs> but yeah, you'll be using this at the fucking wall. He used to get two of them back to back near the wall, but now because of the way it knocks down, you know. But you still got the uh, albatross, or you, you don't you don't even need, you don't even need albatross there. All right, so let's go back to the, the vault situation here. <sighs> All right, okay, now we got one down one, just like before. Uh, one, just like one one down one, similar data. Uh, one down one, negative six on block. Uh, zero on hits, plus five on counter hit. Oh, wait, I just noticed something interesting. Oh, no, he doesn't have, he doesn't have another frame for flicker, does he? Wait, how you going to flicker? Three plus four, back three plus four, there he goes. I don't know if I... If I, you can cancel flicker into a 10 frame jab, is that what's happening? 
and uh, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna test something. Um, let's see. If I turn on counter hit, right? We're gonna turn on counter hit. Uh, counter hit. And then we're gonna make him stand guard and then no guard. Right? Wow, it's not working. He's not. He's still blocking it. I wanted to get hit, hit by the mid. Counter hit. I'm gonna have to space this then, that's weird. Whatever. So because what I'm trying to test here is according to Army Norway, this mid is plus eleven on counter hit. So I just want to see if I get a free crouch jab, and that's why I was trying to see if he had anything faster than twelve frames from flicker, which doesn't look like he does. It, only if you cancel to flicker though. And I can't really test this. Because it's spacing. Oh well. It says plus 11 here on the counter hit, so keep that in mind. Like, the counter hit frame data on that mid is a lot better than on regular hit. And I, that's why it exists. It's another counter hit, so it's not an obvious one, though. Um, doesn't look like he has a unique animation. Oh, he does. So if you see when he gets hit, he's like, kind of shrugs. But here he leans down. Yeah, there you go. So if, if you're really sharp, you'll know that you're at plus like five extra frames when you counter him. Ugh. He also pushes back more than time? Maybe not. I don't know. So that's there. And he can only go into flicker off of one down one. He cannot go into peekaboo or uh, weave. All right. So next we got two. It's two jab based on my testing before. Is Geese playable as of now? I'm out of loop. Sorry. No, he was just announced. He was just announced. Not until winter, cause he's a cold motherfucker. Got to wait a while for him. Anyway, two one is a 12 frame punish. Uh, what's the damage? 26 damage. Ah, oh, one one two. So I guess at 12 frames, if there's nothing better. To stick with 1 1 2. Unless 2 1 has some nasty mix up opportunity. Well, anyway, it's 26 damage, 12 frames, and you can go into the stances. No weave option, you can just go into flicker and peek. Uh, according to this, 2 1 without stance canceling. Uh, by the way, 2 by itself, negative 1 on block, plus 5 on hit. Uh, 2 1 plus 6 on hit. Sorry, 2 by itself, negative 1 on block, plus 5 on hit. Yeah, I think I said that. Whatever. Uh, 2 1, negative 5 on block, plus 6 on it. Okay. Uh, got that out of the way. Boom, boom, buzz it. So. so, 2 1 forward to go into peekaboo is plus 3 uh, on block. So, this is a good way to go into peekaboo because he has a 12 frame option, even though it's a high. This is probably the most popular. Now that I think about it, I think this is the most popular way to go to peekaboo for this reason. Just going on mem my memory of Steve matches, my scattered memory. This is a very popular, new, friendly way to go into peekaboo and force mix-ups. On hit, you gotta respect it. He's plus 14, but you're in a guard state. He doesn't guard break you. So he doesn't get anything guaranteed. But, uh, see, he could block. That was a 14 frame I did then. He could block the 12 frame. But he is at plus 14. He knew this. How would I test? What's the slowest option for that shit? 17 frames. Twenty-eight frames. Alright, I'm gonna try to interrupt this twenty-eight frame low with a I'm assuming 13 frame mid. Yep. Let's see what happens. Down one? No, it's down two. It's okay. <sighs> I feel like that wasn't as fast as it could have been. Well, 
I beat out my 16. Was my math? Maybe my math was wrong, but it's beating out 16. 14 beats it out. What's 15? I don't know what 15 is for him right now from standing, but it's, um, if my 14 frame beats it, but my 16 frame loses clean, so either my inputting is off or it's uh, it would exchange with my my 15 frame would exchange with his uh, his uh, 28 frame low. Is that what it says here? Yeah, 28 frame low. So that's uh, was it 14 plus 14? So is, is that right? 14 or 13? It's a lot. Point being, it's a lot. <laughs> so don't try to swing at him. I mean, you can still crush it. It's not that much, right? Ooh, sure. That low used to be a juggle starter on normal head, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Geese is going to be so OP in second low. My Twitch is acting up. They keep saying I'm offline. Which is annoying. So yeah, 2-1. Really good way to get into Peekaboo. Let's see, it says... Plus 3 on block, right? Same thing with Flicker. Flicker, he's the same frame in, so... You can force both stances. Um... My health forward would be good. Uh, so I got plus 2 out of that, so it could just be me being slow. Because the thing about it is you have to time it. Like... Well, maybe not. If you're trying to go right, all right, you do in the sense that if you're trying to go into flicker one, you have to kind of time it. Maybe not. Um, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me being bad. Not think about it. You don't really have to time that one. But if you're trying to go into a two input, you do have to time it because he has a built-in one uh, two one two. Yeah, there you go. so you gotta be careful. Uh. One flicker, two, two, two. You know what's funny about this much frame advantage? It shows the red bar like as as if it was one combo. The red is my health. But yeah, see, beating out my jab clean with 12, with, with 12 frame flicker jabs. So he's definitely at plus 3 at, at the very least. So I'll just say that one's correct. And just like usual, you can cancel flicker with down back. Where the hell is my air conditioner controller? And when you do that, you lose one frame advantage. So it would be plus 2 if you had a reason to do that, I guess. I can't think of one. So uh, two one two does not combo on either normal or counter hit. Second hit, second hit counter hit gives a third hit, like usual. Like usual with strings like this. And um, does that last two have counter hit properties? You know. So because I had knockback, it's yet another situation like one two one two. 2-1-2, two, two, you could have forced it at the wall pretty well, and you don't risk too much. In this case, it's negative 11, so the negative is 10. Big pun, can you, uh, let me start with Big pun asks, can you guys help me pick a character that is new friendly but not trash? Is it wise to learn the complete move list for said character, or just the most important move moves? Alright, uh, first of all, when you're starting, nobody's trash. As a matter of fact, some of the worst characters in the game probably become some of the best low-level characters in the game. For example, Gigas. You will fucking destroy noobs with Gigas. Easily. I can tell you, hey, use five moves, you'll fuck up most noob players with Gigas. I tell you, do 2-1, stance 1, plus 5 on block, do the juggle if it hits. Do just space them out, 1-2, and, <laughs> and then down back 2, and then grab. Especially when they're back to the wall, grab them. And then that's it, you'll beat most, like, bad players with Gigas. Um... Oh yeah, and down forward one, or down two, whatever mid. They're not gonna punish it either way. Uh, so the thing is, you use who you think is fun. Is my suggestion. If you really, if you really, really, really planning on committing in the long run, and you don't want to pick like the worst character in the game, then yeah, sure, don't pick Giggers and don't pick Chloe. Uh, yeah, not fair. Fuck it. But if you find him fun, I find I hate everything about Giggers except for the f uh, for some aspects of his gameplay. 
mainly because I'm a Marduk main. So Gigas is long. I've been playing Gigas lately. Like, if you didn't notice when I was in the main menu, I actually ranked him up quite a bit. I'm a usurper with him. And he ended up being my highest rank right now. I don't I know. Not that I play online that much, but... Um, it's mainly because I fell in love with his stupid jab range. He could jab from, like, back here. And then when he does that, it's actually fairly hard to whiff punish him, unless you were already swinging in the first place. As a prediction. Like, on reaction, you can't really whiff punish his jab out of range. It's really hard. Uh, he recovers pretty quick. And then it's just everything is punished is 1-2 until, until you're negative negative 15 or worse, and then it's down 2. That's it. I don't have to think. <laughs> I just stand here and I just pop. Pop. Prop stab. Backdash. Pop. Down forward one. Backdash. That's all the gig is. It's down forward one is good range. Well, maybe not. Maybe not so much. Uh, or anyway. Um, back to Steve. So yeah, uh, like I said, this uh, you know these little mid options are, are like they're solid mistakes, but at, especially at the wall, they're extra fucking dangerous because they're not super bad on block unless you're fighting like an Akuma or Eliza with meter, right? Then it becomes a different story. But relatively speaking, it's not not super bad on block. Negative eleven, so. and you get the wall splat on hit. And then it makes him afraid to press shit, so you can force your stances at the wall, which is scarier than mid-stage. So you can't backdash. So I haven't been testing his tracking, because he's been these are mostly jabs, but since he has a unique 2 jab, I'll test the tracking on that. We like you by now you should know one jab, they don't they don't have tracking inherently. But around, but if you have, you're around plus four to plus five, depending on the matchup. In the case of Gigas, maybe you only need plus two. Uh, it becomes harder to sidestep. At plus five, they're generally impossible to sidestep. Uh, maybe moves with built-in sidestep will get around it like an Eddie back two, but proper sidestep won't. So I'm testing sidestep in there, right? I'm gonna see what's up with this two jab. See so linear as hell. So, yeah, so I spent all this time just on Steve's jab strings. And now we're moving on. So 2-1 into stance is good shit. That's the first really strong mix-up opportunity that you got. Uh, I'll go more I'll go more into the actual stance options when I see them later. Because he has like a lot of options out of his stances. Next we got forward two. Ah, this shit. Forward two one, that's a natural combo. All right, so forward two, uh, forward two one, forward two by itself. First of all, is plus five on hit, which it's not showing on the bot. There it is. The bot is weird sometimes. Negative six on block. So forward two by itself is fucking whatever, right? Forward two one could go into flicker and peekaboo. Plus one on block, plus five on hit. That's 15. Okay. Down 4 1. So I might, I might be too slow, but I'm interrupting him with the jab, but nothing. Nothing any slower is just something. Yeah, that shit. Yeah, maybe it's only plus four, or I'm not inputting fast enough. Uh, on block, this isn't real though, so you know, as you can see, don't let him pick on you on block. It's only plus one, and unless he has something in peak with ten frames. Uh, but be careful, because this homing high from Peekaboo is a uh, punch counter. That's Peekaboo 2. That's not Peekaboo 2. It's Peekaboo forward 2, I think, right? No, it's Peekaboo 2. Forward 2 is the uppercut. So that's why I was holding forward to go to Peekaboo and mashing 2. See, that's, that's the kind of shit that 
when inputs overlap like that, that's when you have to actually time these transitions. Right? So if you're trying to swing, yeah, see, that's what happens. Even though the frame data is in your favor for that for that animation, see, you can't do it. Oops. Oh, it doesn't jail. The forward two one doesn't jail. I just learned that by accident. And uh, that punch on counter hit. Yeah, that punch on counter hit starts juggles. I didn't know about that either. Interesting. I'm getting ahead of myself, but you know, I just wanted to show you that. When he's in pickable, you gotta be even though even if it's only he's only at plus one, whatever, you always have to worry about that holding high. I don't know how how bad his frame it has to be for you to actually beat it out with a punch. If if or if it's just active the whole way, I don't really know. It might be active on frame one that, that uh Sabaki does out of that shit. How fast is Steve's back one? It is thirteen frames. Thirteen frame high. So I went over this before, but you, you, you might have heard a lot about how good this move is. This is like the Steve move. This is the key Steve move. This is like one of the the reasons to play Steve really right here, right? And you might be wondering, but hey, you know, there's magic fours that are 11 and 12 frames that do the same shit on counter hit, but ha uh, but uh, have more range or better keep out maybe. No. The thing about back one is uh, he could transition to flicker uh, and uh, he could just do back one, 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 uh, back one. One it's a flicker jabs or back one two. He has uh, these options out of it that could stop you from mashing. Like you can't really, you know, it's basically got a free attempt to counter hit you, and he's still good to like fuck you up after after the fact. That's why it's good. You see, it's like uh, this frame day doesn't right. Negative fourteen, yeah, negative fourteen if he does nothing. But then you know, if you try to swing at him, you're gonna get hit with flicker jabs, which I think have counter hit properties too. <laughs> I'll go in some more detail when I look over the stances. Because I know about these things through here, you say bits and pieces, shit that I've learned in past games, but I never sat down and actually looked through Steve's move list to really know what, what's real, what his options really are. So, that's the plan now, isn't it? Flo, uh, Flowy. <laughs> Lucky Flowy. <laughs> um... <laughs> Lucky Chloe has high damage combos out of one move. One move that you can blow up if you went into training mode and figured it out. <coughs> and her ways to go into that California role actually aren't real. People still, people, myself included, still freeze up after shit like side step four, which leaves her back there, and then she starts to roll. That's bullshit. She's only at plus one, but she's spaced. <coughs> So first of all, you don't have to respect that. So you can start sidewalking the moment it hits you. She's not going to reach you with fucking anything, really. Or you can backdash and then start sidewalking, even with fucking gigas. You just got to know when not to freeze up against that shit. And then you got to fight a Chloe player that's, like, abusing that kind of shit. And then, then you'll be good. You'll be set, you know. I'm not going to say, oh, you'll be sharp enough to get around it every fucking time. Uh, and nobody is. People still get hit by that shit all day. But... That's not a reason to be like, oh, Chloe's good. No, fuck, that movie ain't shit. That, and outside of that, her damage is fucking garbage. You know what's really good with Lucky Chloe? That high spinning armor homing move. That shit is fucking cheap. And then the fact that she can do it out of her jab strength. You see every Chloe player do it because she fucking has to do it because her other options suck so much. You can still win with her. People use her at a very high level, obviously. This dude, uh, what was it, John the Ding. <laughs> He'll always be John the Ding in my heart. John the Ding was using her in top eight. So, yeah. She still says I'm offline. All right, so I was talking about the uh, peekaboo shit with forward two one. And now my computer is popping up garbage. He's supposed to be able to. He's supposed to be able to do mid mid instead of mid high. I know this. There it is. You have to delay the one. There. Weird. So it's showing the input as piano input one two, but that's not right. You. You actually have to delay the two in. So this is forward two, one, with a bit of rhythm, and then you'll go mid mid. So 
stop people from ducking that high. Not that anyone ducks that high. There it is. I had a feeling. So that has that counter hit property of that weird ass knockdown. I don't know if he gets anything for free off of that shit. It says plus 31 knockdown, but I don't know if it's one of those that you can block out of, right? Motherfucker. Let's see if that's guaranteed, right? What the hell? Can you execute it? Yeah. Oh, did I, re I kept the record going? Is that what happened? Rock Howard, baby. Sonic Fang, maybe? Maybe that's Sonic Fang. Yeah, it doesn't combo, so... This is definitely one you can block during. Just to show it. Yeah, see? So you just have a ton of frame advantage. That's what that situation means. I think in second six, that used to universally give you free options. I think they took that away. I might be remembering it wrong, but... Like, for example, Zulia made she stay dead. Her 1-1-1 one, 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 um, did that on counter hit, and then if he didn't tech, she would get a free down forward 2-1 launch. So you had to tech, but it still forced uh, the advantage in her favor. That's how that worked before. I don't know what's going on now, though, with that. Maybe they just took that away completely off of that stuff. And Brian has that too with 4-4, four four, I think, or 4-3 or some shit like that. One of those moves. Um, alright. So he has that mid option to stop you from ducking that has a unique counter hit property. And just on regular hit, it's plus 6. As you can see there. So, when I see that he's still lined up, the Tekken bot and the RB Norway, I'll assume that it's right. <laughs> uh, and it's forward 2-1 by itself. You guess the flicker and the peekaboo cancel. Plus one on block, plus five on hit. So another solid way to go into these stances. Although keep in mind that if you if it's blocked, you don't have a true frame uh, track. But in peekaboo, you have that homing move to stop them from jacking. So it doesn't work. It doesn't work as a cross shot, does it? Let me touch that. Yeah, that's a high, so you can cross jab. But you do that, you're gonna eat the uppercut launcher. Not around right about that too, but <laughs> that. Yeah. When I first started seeing like this kind of these kinds of mix-ups when I gave this stuff. I used to always crouch jab like crazy, and then I, eventually I started eating that uppercut like crazy when a good Steve started to notice that. And that's when I was like, alright, time to uh, not always crouch jab <laughs> when I see peekaboo. Anyway. Uh, next we got 4 plus 1 plus 2. So this is new. And then he goes into a 2. So 4 and 1 plus 2 is just 2 punches built in, mid high. I'm gonna assume that jails because it looks fast as hell. Uh, negative 3. Can't really delay the third hit. You have to come into the third hit. And it's one of those knockdowns that don't wall splash, as you can see. But that definitely looks like it would be a natural combo of normal hit. And uh, the startup on this is 15 frames. So this is a 15 frame punisher for Steve. Good for him. He had nothing after Sonic Fang until launch, which is like this shit, which is really hard to get a juggle off. Really, really hard. I think it was easier before with Bound. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Whatever. This is 17 frames. Now he has a 15 frame punish. And it's 42 damage. Sonic Fang, he, you know, 28 damage. That's a big jump up in damage. Sure, you'd rather get a launch, but, you know, fuck Steve, right? That's what, that's what you get put for uh, playing Steve. So 4 1 plus 2 2 will be your 15 frame block punish. And it has some um, decent range. Okay, range. Any tech off of that? Okay, he recovers too slow to really. He's only plus three according to the tech and proc, so. Can you parry Steve's jump stop? You sure can. It's just a regular ass low. I don't know why you'd want to do that, because if 
if he does the high afterwards, you can just launch him. <clears throat> so if you see this shit coming, what you should do is just that, right? You can do the... Oops, he doesn't have the delay hop kick. He doesn't. He has his bullet gas. Yeah, he has that shit. But you could also low parry. The only loads you cannot low parry are weird shit like if it counts as the knee hitting you or uh, Roger isn't around anymore. But like some loads are like are like uh, limb. There aren't proper limbs. Like Roger had a tail spin low. You couldn't low parry weird shit like that. Or shit like uh, lasers, obviously, or uh, Lisa's rocket arm. Or when her head falls off, that counts as a special med actually, but you can't look at that. Is there a mix-up on that? No, e check. Yeah, just like just like his this, there's no mix-up built in. He has to go low, high, but he could opt to just do the low. So you gotta watch out for that. And he always um He always gets albatross down too, guaranteed if you don't suck like I do. There he goes. That's always guaranteed. Alright, uh... What I forgot what... Oh yeah, 4 and 1 plus 2, two. So that's a good 15 frame. Uh, it is negative 14 on block if you just do 4 and 1 plus 2 by itself. Negative 3 on the hit according to the second block. Uh, RP Norway doesn't show that. And then 4 plus 2 2 is negative 13 on block. So back on 2. For Steve. There you go. I was right, by the way, it, it jails the first two hits. Yeah, so 14 frame didn't punish. That last hit reaches quite a bit. Oh, yeah, I didn't take the tracking on forward two, so I should do that real quick. It's gonna be a weird one, so I have to record him doing it, I guess. One, two. I don't think it has really any tracking. does. Damn, this track's pretty fucking good. How about up close? Yeah, holy shit. Alright, now let me test it off of a jab now. Okay. So, that first hit at the very least. Yeah, damn, that first hit tracks quite well. I didn't know that. Although the second uh, hit did whiff when he went to his left toward the screen. So that's interesting. I didn't know that that tracks so well. <laughs> this tracks well too. Fucking Steve. Good side, good side movement and good track. And the second hit clips if you go right. So you can duck, I guess, but like... Who uses this move with the neutral? I don't know. Yeah, even the sidewalk. Jeez. Alright. So 4 1 plus 2 at forward 2 1. Track pretty well. What happens if I do the whole thing when he goes the other way? Ah, uh, the third hit will still catch him. Yeah, fuck. My right eye is like swollen and shit because of my dog. I'm having trouble seeing out of it. Alright, so good shit so far. Next we got down forward one. He has a pretty good down forward one, right? Not as good on block as a lot of others, like Dragon Offs. It's negative two. But it's 13 frame startup. It's as good as an easy because he has built in follow ups, just like Dragon Off and Kazumi and shit like that. So you get down forward of uh, one, two. Yeah, Steve in general, you want to backdash, I agree. 
Because uh, the reason you want to back that Steve is it makes it so you'll never have to worry about lows other than watching for this this one, which is like I said, edge case seeable, and this one. This is the one that catches me quite a bit. This one, every time I think I'm out of range, just pop right in my fucking shit. I don't know if you had that before. That's a good low poke though. Really good one. Like this is kind of whatever. This has a lot of range too, but it's kind of fucking whatever, you know. This it's like 13 damage, 14 damage. Uh, loop back on my playlist here. The KOF music is done. Uh, whoopsies, play off. Now we go to JRPG music. Same one. I'm I gotta make a new playlist. Anyway. So down four one is good. Let me see the track it on. Yeah, tracks uh, okay is to his uh, to his left. Tracks really good to his left, maybe. Negative five plus one minus two negative six. off axis he still gets it down forward one two to connect all right so now he has uh down forward one also goes into the weave and when you do that you add four frames of recovery according to rb norway so maybe five maybe okay that's not a good way to put it because Colonel Arbor Norway, when you do the weaves out of down forward one, it's negative six instead of negative two on block. But on hit, it's zero instead of plus five, so he loses the five frame of that. It's been weird to test. That's 14 frames. Okay, so I'm assuming that this is right. Yep, 14 frame exchange. Okay, so that is zero on hits. But then he has down forward one, two, like I was showing earlier. So this is also a, an option for a 13 frame punish if you don't want to do it back one, two. Down forward one, two, right? Both of these options, though, for 13 frames are less damage than 1-1-2, uh, one, one, of course. But you could also uh, force the stance. Which stance is it? Down forward 1-2. Oh, sorry. No, he could only go into weave. I thought he could force peekaboo and uh, flicker. You could only go into weave off of down forward 1-2 and down forward 1. In the case of down forward 1-2, the frame data is absolute horrendous. Well, down forward 1-2 on the hit by itself. Can't change speed quality? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm affiliated, I promise. <laughs> I still have a sub button, right? <laughs> down forward one. Damn it. There we go. Down forward one, two. What's going on? He's canceling out of it. That's interesting. So you can actually cancel mid swing on the two. You see it? So you can fake out. But Steve has quite a few uh, moves that do that, like shit like this. You think he's going low, then he goes mid-bid. Same thing here. You think he's going high, then he goes mid-bid. He has a lot of these weird, like, visual fake-outs, which is cool for a boxer, because he really do that shit, right? Um, so the same thing here with Dot Ford 1, 2. But does that mean he can't go into weave after the 2? Okay, so I'm seeing it now. All right, so RB Noah says down forward one, two, three, or four to weave, and then it says it's a cancel. So you're actually canceling out of the two, which is probably why the frame data is so shitty. Because you start the two animation, but then you're canceling that into a weave. Yeah, see? Yeah, he's like, <laughs> it's really weird. All right. So that's there. So that's not really a frame trap, that's a visual trap. 
Alright, and he has down forward 2-1-2, so he can cancel that into a into what basically is a back one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, see? Same, th same data as back one. Uh, negative 2 on block. And then that goes into flicker, just like back one. So this is dot forward two one one uh, dot forward one two one. And dot forward one two dot forward one two one. Dot forward, uh, dot forward one two one. Go holding back goes to flicker, which is zero on block. So let me uh, basically what that means is um, back one flicker one. 13 frames, so back one it's a flick on block might be zero also. Let me see. That's 12 frames. Okay, this is 13. Okay, so the back one is uh it's a flicker is negative one. Unless uh, I was slow, which I don't think I was. It looks fast to me. Oops. What the fuck? Man, that's hard. There it is. Yeah. It seems like I can't get it any better to be negative one on that uh, get it any better than negative one on block, so that's my uh, assumption for now. Negative one on block. Transcode is mostly based on viewer count, uh, but people were getting it last time. I don't have a lot of viewers, clearly, but people were getting it last time. I don't know. It's been like a week. Maybe they took everything away from me. <laughs> yeah, I've been streaming for a week, you fucking bum. Alright, anyway. Um, for one, two, we've canceled, we went over that already. Uh, for one, two, one, it's just like back one. And he has that for one, two, two, so to fake out. <laughs> that shit's a double fake out visually. So he looks like he's gonna do the dot four one two one cancel, and then he cancels that and goes into another a mid. See that shit? <laughs> Boom! Right? <laughs> he's fucking shifting around like a motherfucker, and that does that uh, that same knockdown as uh, the forward two one two does. Boom! Which it didn't do there. Oh, I lost the super charge. Boom! There you go. See? Same thing as um, as this that mid. Forward two on two. Boom. Same shit. Same situation. All right, we're learning. So uh, you have a lot. Of, he gives you quite a few reasons to be careful when you're trying to think about ducking down forward one two, which is nuts. Cause I forget who it was that fought Tyson in the top eight in evil. They straight up duck and like launched him for this shit one time. Just die for it. He was like, what the fuck? Who ducks that? Not only that, not only who ducks that, but who ducks that and gets the punish. I forget if he did a launch punish or a 13 frame while standing. It was something like that. And then he fucking nailed him with it. It was like, <gasps> this shit was nuts. And he was talking. I don't know. As a matter of fact, I think even Aris said that shit on commentary. <laughs> he was like, who ducks that shit? Alright, uh. Yes, I am beautiful, I agree. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Next we got down for one, two, canceled forward one plus two. Is that the new move? Oh, I forget if he had this before, but this goes into his 10 hit, doesn't it? Yeah, so you can go into his 10 hit or however the fuck you do it. So down forward one, two, forward one plus two for that. And that is negative three on block. Zero on hits. Zero to plus three on counter hit? I don't know why I'm saying that. That's weird. Maybe if only two hits? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it says that. Uh, I'm just gonna go with zero on hit, though. And it says it twice, but special. For some reason, RB Norway is listing this move twice, and one time is listing it as special. With different frame data. I don't, I don't really get why. Very weird. But whatever. <laughs> so just like his regular ass 10 hit, if I'm not mistaken. Oh 
Oh, maybe not. There it is, see? Yeah. So, in his regular 10, it is his regular 10 hit. That's all that it's showing. This is exact, yeah, 1, 2, cancel, 4, 1, plus 2. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's just his 10 hit. It, for some reason, RB no way is listing the forward 1 plus 2 portion of it, and I think it's because the frame 8 is actually okay on it. Like, if people are backdashing a lot, that's not a bad option, because you zero on block in their face. That's actually really fucking good for Steve. That's not wrong. Maybe really good is pushing it, but that's that's good enough for Steve, you know? Like, I'd be more worried about Steve being zero in my face than a lot of other characters. Let's put it that way. So, this is another nice option to have that chases down. He steps forward. He does a little hop, 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 skip forward. Down forward two is the classic. All right, so this is a key move for Steve right here. Really good homing move, right? And then uh, plus six on hit, on counter hit, and he gets the juggle, right? And uh, as far as converting off of that juggle, um, I don't know if you need to go into stance. Yeah, that didn't combo. Okay, it does combo. So you don't need to go into stance to convert it, but you do need to go into stance to make it safe, right? Which is why you're just gonna wanna always go into stance anyway. See, it's negative 11 here, it says. It says negative 12 in RB Norway, so let's see. Yeah, so negative 11 is probably right. Negative 12 did a uh, 12 frame did a punish. So, when you go into stance, he has the option to go into weave. Uh, and Arby Noe doesn't show it, but he does have the option to go into ducking, which makes sense because, like, he can't. I don't know if he can actually force a, a proper ass mix up on hit. I'm gonna go under highs. Ooh, that's a frame trap. Yeah, that's a real frame trap. Alright, so Arbinoi, at least as of right here, it's not showing the ducking cancel. It's only showing the uh, weave cancel. According to Arbinoi, the weave cancel is... It doesn't say how much plus it is. It just says negative 9 on block. It doesn't know how much. So we're going to have to do it ourselves. Alright, first let's see if the plus 4 is right on just the down forward 2 by itself. Fourteen frames beating me clean. Oh my god, that's plus six on hit. So RB Norway is wrong. It says the question mark in there to fuss up. Tekken bot is right. RB Norway is wrong. It's funny because it was the other way around before, I think, wasn't it? Oh no, I think the second bot has been right so far. RB Norway's man was wrong. Anyway, <clears throat> so this is plus six on regular hit. And then uh, ducking one is uninterruptible, which is a 19 frame mid, apparently, according to second bot. So, yeah. How about that? Can you interrupt that? I mean, once ducking one hits you, you shouldn't be swinging at all. I'd still want to know, though. Yeah, that's a frame trap too. That's 19 frame. Why well, they're both 19 frame, aren't they? Well, whatever. How do you do the unblockable? There it is. So now that he has that unblockable from ducking, if he hits you with this, he could force uh, you to duck because of that unblockable. But then again, it comes out delayed, so I don't think that's real. He has to do the double duck to get that shit. Which doubles as a counter hit, uh, Juggle Star. Do 
do the double duck at that? I gotta mash that shit. He gets that extra duck out of it. And since you know he uh, he can't duck into a low crush, like he's stuck. Yeah. So you could easily crouch jab him, I think, when you get used to it. In the heat of the moment, if he tries to sneak that in on you. Either way it goes, don't respect down forward two on block into ducking. I, I still make that mistake because I'm not fucking used to it yet. But uh, down forward two on ducking, it's a follow-up. So it's not real if you're fighting against Steve. If you're using Steve, down forward two on block into ducking is not real. It'll duck highs, and you'll think that it's good because of that, but you can't stop the mids. You have no options to stop the mids when you do that shit. You, except blocking. So you have to down forward to duck and then block if I'm not mistaken, right? There's a way to there's a way to cancel this to block instantly. So that I don't this I don't know how to do. Um, I'm still hitting him. Anybody know any Steve players in the chat know? I know there's a way to make this safe. It happened a lot during Evil Top 8. They did the ducking and then they canceled the ducking. Uh, there's a way to cancel ducking fast. Is it down? Is it down and then back? Yeah, it is. See? Blocking. Blocking. Your cross shaft? Blocked. Blocked. It's all blocked. So you have to cancel the ducking with down. And then I, I just remember that because that's how you used to have to uh, do the wild man. The duck cancel into wild man for bounce in uh, Tekken Tag 2. And in Tekken 6. Which you don't need anymore. So, boom forward. Yeah, so that, it's a complicated process to make this move safe on block, but it's worth it. Because it's a good move. So, dot forward two, forward plus three, or forward plus four to go into ducking afterwards. And then you, you tap like down or down towards, and then back. So, go into guard. But you're definitely not in any sort of advantage to swing after it's blocked. So be careful with that stuff. Uh, so it, we're gonna let me assess the weave data because it doesn't know how many pluses is 14, uh, 15. You have anything slower? No, he only has a 14 and 15 frame option. 15. Those are really his only two options. Let's see. I wish there was a faster way to score to the top. Ducking left. Ah, uh, it caused the game calls it ducking. How confusing is this shit? Uh, so yeah, one, 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 or two. Ducking left. Forward two or two? So 
Like, he only has a 14 and 50 frame options. That's like, okay. Same thing here, right? Okay, good. So I don't have to worry about anything else to test this. So the slowest option he has. Yeah, alright. It's a real mix up. That's all you gotta see. Can you sidestep? No, oh, you can't even sidestep. Alright, yeah. So if that hits you. I mean, there's no low option at the ducking, so if he goes to the ducking, you don't have to worry about a mix up. But let's go. Keep that in mind. From both ends. If you're Steve, you could uh, force those options and you'll blow up matches for free. If you're against Steve, don't fucking swing if that hits you. Don't swing high if you block it. <laughs> Don't swing high. Don't ever swing high when you block that shit. Blow up everything else now. Oof, can't quite do that though. Next down for Wumpasu, that's Sonic Fang. This is, as I said earlier, his 14 frame Punisher. Good move, wall splats from pretty far away. See, and it does, it does like a, not a hard wall splat, but like a regular one. A good enough one that you could follow up with a combo. Even when you're like not up against the wall. When you're up against the wall, you get like a weird slump. I don't know if you can follow this up. But if you're like not against the wall, then you could actually get a full wall combo. It's a little weird like that, but you know, whatever. Yeah, he has no shortage of wall splats, so it's not a big deal. And you really shouldn't be throwing this on anyway. That's like, this is like his primary whiff punisher too. As you see, it has really good range. So, it's a good, really good move. It's a key move for him. You know? It's good shit. He just has to rely on it too much. It is negative 12 on block. No punish. So negative twelve on block. Uh, second hit track, so you better walk. Same thing here. It's one of those you gotta watch out for. I feel like I remember this happening to me a lot. Oh man. <laughs> Funny how that happens, huh? So it has some sort of weird tracking. Okay, not so much there. But then when you're spaced out, weird shit happens. It's one of those moves, man. It's one of those moves. You're better off uh, block punishing. If you think it's coming. And it has a lot of distance, so that shit will clip you all day if you're not ready for it. Oh, by the way, like usual, people, feel free to ask questions. I'm still glancing over at the chat. Alright, so next we got... Uh, down for one plus two when the second hit misses. Oh, wow. Apparently that could happen. I ain't know. When that happens, it's punishable on hit and on lock. <laughs> Forces crush. Oh, yeah, it does, because the first hit is the overhead. Well, I don't know how to set that situation up, but it is negative 12 on hits if the second hit whiffs. So, I don't know. If, you're, if you know about a situation where you see that happen, you can try to be ready for it. So, next on the list, it says it's his rage drive. Check it so we can look at now. So, rage drive. You just go into it and do nothing for some reason. And then you just press 1 plus 2 to make all that happen. And he gets uh, wall splat damage there. Not wall splat, but like wall chip, I guess I'll call it. 5 damage, which can kill if they're near a wall. The Dempsey roll. 
go all Mike Tyson or Hajime no Ippo on that shit. If that wall splat, like that little wall chip damage happens from pretty far away. There you go, see? <laughs> as long as they're, the wall is uh, stopping them at that slide. Let's have a disgustingly normal human. How you doing? The startup is slow. Um, I don't know how he uses it outside of juggles, to be honest with you guys. And it pushes back too far, so he's not going to, you know, frame of action is not going to be a, a deal, you know, not going to be a big deal here. Unless you're at the wall. And then that, he gets some sort of advantage when he gets pushed into the wall like that. I don't know exactly how much. Right. I guess this could be tested. Uh, I'll just test it off a of down forward too, because I might test it with anything else. Okay. How easy to crush is that rage drive? What do you mean crush? It's a mid. You can't crush a rage drive. Yeah, so that's a frame trap. 16, fr at least uh, plus seven on that. So he doesn't get anything guaranteed, but you gotta respect the plus frames when you get pushed into the wall like that. Are you asking? Do you mean to ask how good is that rage uh, drive at crushing ice? Is that what you meant to ask? So, like three frames activation on the crush. Let me try to flick it. One, one, one jab. There it is back here. That's too far. It's not going to work out. Oh, wow. Negative nine. <laughs> Negative nine, and he goes under. So, this crush is highs instantly. I mean, unless that first dab is just not, it's just some other reason. I don't know if he's like leaning to make that like a sidestep also. But yeah, it's a good high, it's good for high crushing. Nah, you can't low crush it, it's a, uh, it's not a low, it's just flicker, it's just uh, uh what you call it, um, Dempsey roll to mids. He has Dempsey roll regularly too, I don't know how to do it, or I don't remember at least. Out there. It's not a good move though. I know that much. There's no use for it. Uh, the Dempsey roll itself. Not Rage Drive version, it's a good move. I don't know how he uses it in jungles, if at all. That's that's what I had. I've never seen Steve players use that shit in jungles. I don't know. This is a pit bull option that gets you to the wall. Which is good for Steve. Maybe that's why they made it that way. He's really good at the wall. Anyway, next we got down one, the low poke I was talking about earlier. Negative 13 on Barak. Baraku. Zero on a hit. 
Nothing special on counter here. I thought it's knocked down. Go figure. It's a good high crush too. Forward. Yeah, looks like it tracks very well. Steve has no fucking tracking issues, it seems. That's yeah, really hard. You get around it, but it doesn't even seem consistent. I was doing sidestep into uh, sway left. Sidestep left to sway left there. It's strong. But you gotta kinda time. There's like there's a certain rhythm to using it effectively, it looks it seems like. That rage drive track. I think it does. So he turns with you. And I remember seeing this happen before. See? So if the first one whips, he stays turning towards you. While you sidewalk around him. So that shit is basically like a fucking homie move. See? <laughs> he swung the wrong direction the first one. He's like, oh, you're going that way? And then he turned with you and started swinging at him. So if you if you feel like you're fast enough to uh, get around the first hit and interrupt, then by all means. Go for it. Okay, so down one tracks pretty damn well. 16 frames, you recover crouching. Uh, only zero on hit. Uh, the cool thing is, he pretty much has like a 50 50, although the low offense clearly, like like I said, a before edge case seeable, because it's just the same down back to low. You do down back to for crouching, same shit. You can stay crouching. Uh, and uh, this is uh, one way to go into it, I guess. Although it's zero on hit, so. You gotta, like, get him afraid to press up because of Wild Man, I guess. Which is not the best. So I wouldn't really call it a good full cross mix up, but it's there. You wanna abuse it on somebody. So, yeah, down one. I would just say down one is something that you do and then you back off. Or you do, or every once in a while, you throw in, like, a wild standing one by itself. Which is better than most other 11 frame moves uh, while standing fours, because it's, it's 12 damage, so I think a little less than your typical while standing four, or, or around the same. But it's much better on block. Not as good on hit though, but it's only negative three on block. So while standing one by itself is a solid like follow up to that. You don't want to take the risk of just throwing out a fucking wild man like a nutcase. The latest second hit Wildman too. I think when you do that, if it counter hits, you got a knockdown with the free follow up. That's while standing one too. Maybe not a free follow up. But... Oh, you definitely. Negative 20, uh, plus 23, you definitely get something. Give me another down one. Well, whatever, you got something, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, so down one, you know, you're not really at plus, but you still have options. And then next we got down two. Oh yeah, down one tracks really well. Negative 13, um, does he have, he doesn't have a 13 frame. Because he doesn't have while standing three or four as an option. He just goes to duck it, uh, it's a weave. <laughs> so fucking weird. So he only has this. And 14 frames.
Oh, he's got the peekaboo. Oh shit, he can force. Oh, I didn't know that. Interesting. So, if you do the full cross down forward one, he does the peekaboo low and goes right back into, well, goes right into peekaboo, not back into it. And you can also do the low from there. So he can actually force a 50-50. So you can do this, it's like the, this, it's the peekaboo low, and then start fucking with them shit. And it'll go under highs, obviously, so the zero on hit won't matter as much. But you do risk exchanging with, uh, in that situation, 15 frame moves, like a hop kick, like uh, a lot of launches. So anyway, now we got down 2-1, which is, you gotta like, input it slow. I think it combos on counter hit, right? Yeah. And if you input it too fast, you'll fake the low and then you'll go mid for down 2-1 really fast. So if you want the low, you gotta let it swing and then hit the hit the one, let the down two swing and then hit the one after. And the combos on counter hit. The down two one is negative eleven. The down two by itself is negative five on hit and negative eighteen on block. But people got a little afraid of swinging because of that mid. And um, down two one goes into weave. A little awkward input, but it's there. So that's there because down two one by itself is negative eleven. I bet you, if you record it with the weave, it'll duck jabs. Let's see. Oh god. So let's see. Oh, block. No. Okay, see. So jab punch works, right? So if I do the weave. go. Let's actually do an attack out of it just to make sure, right? Oh man, this input is so weird. Oh, I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to weave. So let's see what happens now. Like I said, there you go. Clear as day, right? I'm pretty sure people have been hit by that before, even though this is negative like a thousand. Let's see? 60 frame mid stop, put a stop to that shit. I got pop ups everywhere. Yeah, I'm getting greedy. Track. Do. Okay, so the track stuck pretty well. Yeah, the sidewalk to your right to get around this shit. All right, plus one. Good. How does that do? That shit's plus a lot. Holy crap, plus nine? It's more than most. Wow, his shit was glitching, OD. Alright, so, uh... Down two tracks pretty damn well. He was only able to get around it when he sidestepped to his right. Okay, so now we got the other shit. This is popular amongst like new Steve players to so use this string right here. So we got down two one two. Sorry, down two one two. So that two in the end is a counter hit juggle starter. Right, not done on normal hit. And it does the back one counter hit shit. Uh, according to RB Norway, the data on this is not two, one, two, negative two on block. 
not a string. So how do you beat it? You duck the fucking high. Duck the high, duck the high lunch. So this is just another reason to stop people from mashing, but that's why it's important when you fight against Steve to know you gotta be quick though. Man, how do you get an instant? There you go. Ah, you have to go into full crop state and then delay the down forward too. So the cat see you swinging. Bye, see? It's a good string though. Now he has down two, neutral one. Which is what I did before, yeah. So if you input real fast down two and let the stick go to neutral. Oh is this making natural? I just learned something. Okay, so if you want to input this without accidentally inputting the uh, without accidentally inputting the cancel like I was doing before, you just hold down the whole time. Down plus two and keep holding down and then press one. If you let the stick go into neutral after down two and you input it too fast, you're gonna get that cancel. It opens up the window for that cancel, which is a huge fucking window. But if you hold down the whole time, you can input, you can mash out the one. And it'll come out. So I just learned that. Either way it goes. If you do that cancel and you go mid, you have a natural combo with one two, which is kinda like Wild Man, really. You yeah, see? More, uh, more damage than Wild Man, though. 35 instead of 32. This is plus 7 on hit. Um, only negative 4 on block, according to this. And then if you do the second hit, it's negative 13, just like Wild Man. Or he has that same counter hit high option out of it if you press it forward uh, as forward two in the end. So this is down two, neutral one, down two, neutral one, two, down two, neutral one, forward two, which has the counter hit properties. See? Just like down two, one, two, same, same, uh, same right hook. Alright. And, uh. That, just like Wild Man, that knocks down on counter hit. Alright, let's see. Also, uh. This goes to weave. Down two, neutral one. Goes to left and right weave. So. Like usual, if you're gonna swing, swing with a mid, but then that high counter hit will check you. So a cross jab might be good, but that shit is like not bad on block. So if you try to cross jab, he'll he'll uh get a launcher on you for that. Or the middle cash in. I was too slow. Can he put that any faster? I well, can do that. This is the input overlap because of that heavy delay. Maybe not. Negative four. That'll stop your cross jab. Yeah. Anyway. It's good to know that he can't seem to low crush it though. Doesn't jump fast enough, I guess. Oh, he 
you stay standing. I thought you recover crouching. Only on hit, it seems like. Yeah, only on hit. Yeah, okay, so 14 frame is not punishing. But 13 frame is. Alright, so that's that whole screen. Down two tracks well. Uh, if the down two hits you. Yeah, you can't really step if the down two hits you. I'm starting to think that you're going to want to low parry, Steve, unless this is coming. As Steve, you're going to want to low parry, obviously, because while standing punishment is kind of whatever. Against Steve, I think you're going to want to low parry it also, though. unless it's this, or visually you can see this coming. Or when you're back into the wall, you know this is coming. Those are probably the only instances where I would suggest, okay, block instead of low parry. So next we got down back three. And down back 3 2. I went over this already, but it has shit range. The tracking's a little funky. I think it tracks fairly well, but the range may makes the tracking weird, depending on the matchup. Okay. And maybe it doesn't track at all. Yeah, it doesn't track at all. Oh, you caught him that one time. It's catching him like half the time. Weird, right? Even off of that, it's a little funky. Alright, sidewalk right seems to get around it consistently. Oh, it doesn't matter. Plus nine, he was able to back that shit. This is the problem with this move. Like, in the mid stage. This move is only good when you're able to uh, force the mix up right in their fucking face. Because look at that, this is spaced out just barely, and it's still good enough to like backdash. How about for this? Look at that shit. Even that on hit. <laughs> I thought that was a good follow up to that. Apparently it isn't. Really, that's actually quite difficult to do it yourself. By the way, Wild Man is very hit confirmable, I think. Maybe not. <laughs> no, it's not. I take that back. Still. Yeah, down back 3-2, the tracking is kind of whatever, right? How do you do the, uh... I forgot to do his punch parry. I thought it was three, uh, two forward. Oh, uh, whatever. And has shit tracking, has shit range, and it's very punishable. Down back three by itself says it's plus one. Seems like the game agrees. Ah, what's this called again? Sh 
shotgun or some shit? Not shotgun, um... Down back plus one plus two. Stun gun. Before, that used to be a combo uh, in Tekken DR. If you got hit with a stun gun, when you're back to the wall, Hellfire. When you're back to the wall, Hellfire would be guaranteed. It's unblockable. And it would wall splat. <laughs> Obviously, it's not now. I was just curious if it still was. So, stun gun is now his, uh, his fucking armor move, apparently. He's gotta give him something free at the wall. Right. Yeah, I guess some jab. What else? Well, it says combo. Let me not assume that that's free until I do it on myself, right? Um. Okay. I mean, at this point, what would be the wall splat? I. Um. Alright, let's see what this is really about. That's guaranteed. So, if that slow ass shit is guaranteed, he probably has something better. Either way, go. Just remember that you get free shit at the wall with this if it connects. It, big if. <laughs> it's a big if, but still. You might also get free shit like around here if it connects, so keep that in mind too. Here. Well, whatever. The wall has to be involved for you to get free shit. So you gotta remember for that. Uh, stun gun, according to this, is where the fuck is it? It doesn't show how much it is on block, it probably pushes back. Make a block after that. It also crushes highs, so it's an armor move that crushes highs. There you go. Well, that punished. That punished. Alright, well, 442 and uh, Sonic Fang punished. Uh, 442 is what? 14 frames. I don't know if I got it to come out of 14 frames there, but Sonic Fang is also 14 frames. Uh, I don't have anything else I can test. Doesn't reach. Yeah, I don't know what else I can test. Thanks for Steve. This didn't reach, right? Alright, well, that stun gun. Pushback makes it hard uh, or awkward to punish. Alright, now we got back one. I wonder why it's so far down. So, back one, I talked a lot about it. Let's see what the data actually shows here. Yeah, so back one by itself is punishable if they do nothing. Which is why if you want to make it safe when you're Steve, you go into Flicker and you cancel Flicker. 
right? So hold back, down back. Hold back, and then when you go to flicker, down back to make it safe. Otherwise, it's a show as a punish, but you're stuck in flicker, so you can't block. You visually see him ducking, and I still can't punish him. So you gotta cancel the flicker to make it safe. And then uh, the frame data coin is when you do that, it's negative three at best. Uh, at worst, sorry. Well, at best, I should say, not at worst. Depending on how clean your cancel is. So next we got back one two, which goes to peekaboo. Back one two peekaboo is uh, back one two bites both by itself and into peekaboo is negative five on block plus six on hit. Aris is live. Arisu. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go through these back one and back two options. Back these back one options, then I'm gonna do back two and then back one plus two. Which apparently is the parry that I was looking for before. I was wondering where this was. Let me record this again because I want to see if I can do this. <laughs> and then I want to call it for part one. I can't tell how long I've been at it because the fucking Twitch thing is not showing up for me. That parry works against Gigas, his run stuff, by the way. I learned that the hard way, thanks to Ron Miller. Yeah. There it is. Okay, so back one to speaking of Gigas, have I been playing him any and has my opinion of him changed a bit? Oh, I went over this earlier. Just to show you really quick. I'm gonna change the stage anyway. As you can see on the top right. Yeah, I have been playing. What's my record anyway? I don't know if that's only for Gigas or for all my characters. Wow, I played more matches than I thought. 78% win rate. 23 wins, I was with Gigas. <laughs> I had him on the win streak up to the up to the the uh, World Warrior rank. So yeah. Okay, that is for all. So yeah, I, I, I have been playing him. I just like his jab range. Quite a bit. I don't like anything else about him. I like that he has a shitload of damage. Gigas. Gigas fucking hurts. Have you ever done sample combo number five with Gigas? <laughs> Have you ever seen the damage on that? I'll show you one little thing real quick here. Never think to say it anyway, right? Combo number five. Well, Gigas sucks. Gigas is not a good character. I can tell you that easily. I just like that, you know, all day long from like 
back, you know, from back here, you're like, oh, and then the mo you know, you backdash over and over again, and the moment they swing, you just kill them, right? So anyway, in case you don't know, uh, this is sample combo number five, right? No, no not that. Hachi with the fucking old man legs. The timing's a little weird on it. There it is. So first of all, look at this damage, right? 109. Let's turn off rage. That is a combo. 86 plus 16. 96, 102. 102 damage without rage required. That is all one combo. Even though you don't see it as combo, that last hit is guaranteed. And because that last hit is guaranteed but not a combo, it rescales to 80% on the fucking last hit. So that last hit does 16 damage. And you saw how much easier, how much easier that shit was, uh, that shit was? Yeah, it requires counter hit, I know that. I'm just saying. <laughs> Giga sucks. Giga sucks, right? I said this earlier. But if you're fighting against, if you fight against people that don't know how to fight him, one, or two, or new at the game, or God forbid both, he just fucking rips everyone to shreds. He completely rips everyone to shreds. It's fucking ridiculous. That same combo with Rage... This is a counter hit launcher, that's why. 86. Uh, 94. It was 94 plus 17. 94 plus 17. Do the math. And then this shit uh, is 55 without rage. When it back to the wall, it's 75 without rage. You cannot tech it. You cannot tech it. Even with the... Let's see how much it does off of a regular launcher. Still really hard to connect. 51. So it's gonna do like uh, 70 something, I think. Yeah, 74. This is a this running two is fucking amazing. If you get, if you're good at instant raw running two, this shit clips people all day Kazumi style. People have tried to sidestep this when they see me running when I just when I'm just dancing around from my jab range here like this. Uh, I, I, that's, what, that's what I'm saying I keep making this back one's a launcher. Uh, so when I try to back that into a stand jab and sometimes I get that. But anyway, when I'm doing this whole thing and all of a sudden I move forward and they try to sidestep, it's like, no, it stays still. This fucking shoulder. I love that shit. And then this, this shit, even though it's like negative whatever, it pushes back so much and it tracks to his right. It's just so easy to abuse people that don't know how to play Tekken with this character. Just like this into the fucking throw. It's just easy to, easy to, easy to, uh, Buffer. You know, I know how to use this string already because of Marduk. Although, unlike Marduk, I can commit to both hits and still get a juggle easily because he does the tail spin off of that shit. You're supposed to be able to convert off of that. Why am I? Why am I charging? Yes, this shit. Oops, is that combo? Look at how much damage. That's a 13 frame counter hit tool. But you can't combo off of it regularly. Whatever, I'm gonna be stuck here. Uh, I mean, that's whatever. You just Ugh, dash, you asshole. That's also my problem with those uh, with the grabs like that. Is um yeah, it's character dependent sometimes. It's easier with King because he has a bigger grab hitbox, I guess. 
Anyway, enough of that detour. Go back to the bitch. I was using Rahan. It's not as good as doing a proper juggle with him. The, the down forward 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 is what you always want with Gigas. It does more damage than anything, trust me on that one. It's just, if you drop it, if you fuck up the step forward into it, you're gonna get launched. Because that shit is super unsafe. Alright, so I wanted to change the scene here. Go to this fucked up stage. Oh, a Steve tip on the bottom. That's interesting. So anyway, let's talk about the back one series. So he has uh, back one, two, negative five on block. Uh, plus six on hit. Back one by itself is plus two on hit if you don't cancel. If you cancel, it's a flicker. It's plus 9 to plus 10 on him. No guarantee follow-ups. So the thing is, regardless of whether you cancel to, uh, it's a flicker or not, you still get a juggle. See, you can carry with flicker jabs and continue to juggle from there. And then if you don't go into flicker, you can carry with forward 2-1 or whatever the fuck else. You can carry it with a lot of shit. Yeah, see, down 2-1. Um, and then back one two, so back to back one two. Uh, back one two goes into peekaboo, but it's a negative on block, so you can't abuse it like you do with two one. Just twelve frame start, so it's better. Yeah, and there's no reason to respect this on block because he doesn't have a. Um, Another option off of back one two. Once you see you block back one two, you could swing after it for free, pretty much. Yeah, see, you don't have to respect that. Try to sidestep and sway and shit all he wants, but you'll catch him with most, with most options. What I wouldn't do after that is jab, because then you'll get fucked with a high crush. But back one two is not to be respected on block. Uh, let's see. He has back one down two. Yes, this is that Tekken six shit. This is his wannabe junkyard. Wanna be junkyard combo. For those of you that don't know, a junkyard is uh, laws back two, three, four. This goes into peekaboo. All right. So let's see. Uh, back one down two is zero on hit, negative eleven on block. Not bad. And then if you try to punish it, of course that last hit will catch you. That last hit will wall splat, but he won't get any juggles mid-stage. As you can see, he knocks him away. So, the reason you want people to stop mashing after that is because you have the option to go into peekaboo off of the low. So if you're against Steve, just like Law, low parry the second hit, fuzzy it. Low, input low parry, stand block. I guess they don't. They could delay it though, I think, right? Yeah, you could put some delay on it. But it's without delay, it's with a little bit of delay. Without delay, a little bit of delay. Alright. Uh, I don't think that mid has any counter properties, but that mid is safe. So, recap. This insupicable on block is actually negative 13. Whatever. If you low parry, you don't have to think about it. Just low parry the low. If you are Steve, this on hit that low. Excuse me. Is <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I need water. Hold on. 
is ne <laughs> is negative two. Only negative two. So you could actually stay pretty aggressive if they don't know how to how to fight against it because it, uh, fast faster moves that are punches will get you'll have the option of uh, this to stop that. And then if you go with the other fast option, which is 12 frames, this, um, it'll exchange for 14 frame kicks. So if they go 14 frame or faster. So I would worry about Magic Force if you swing after this. I don't know if he's naturally ducking during Peekable. I actually never tested that. I just test that right now. Okay, he's not. So he'd have to swing. But he has high crush options from Peekaboo, so. Give you an example here. That will probably crush, right? Yep, see? Ooh! He's not a negative two. That's a 15 frame low. And we're exchanging. His 15 frame low is exchanging with my 13 frame mid, so he's at plus two, not negative two. Plus two. I'd be no way wrong. So you're at plus two. Good shit. You got another reason to parry this if you're against Steve. So this should exchange with a jab. There you go. Plus two. some reason. Oh, I see. No, no, it's okay, okay. I was reading this wrong for a second. So, okay, that's this. Okay. He could put the delay on that third hit, too. So this is it without the delay. That's as fast as possible. I'm trying to put some delay on this third hit now. You can only put a little bit of delay on it, not so much. If the low counter hits, the mid is guaranteed. If the first hit counters, of course, it's back one. The whole thing's gonna get a combo. The question is, can he convert off of that? I don't know. I think he can. Yeah. He can do something, for sure. I mean, is it worth it? That, I don't know. Man. I don't know if he could chase it down for a full combo, but he could definitely convert it. It's a something. And then, safe. Safe with pushback at that. Ooh. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, he's at negative nine, so maybe he won't be able to backdash at all. Even though with a bit of pushback, not good enough. So that string, but that string is pretty good. So back one by itself, I believe this tracks like a motherfucker. Uh, well, for a plus one situation it does. It's a common setup for this motherfucker, so. At negative five it does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> that was a flicker jab. There you go. Flick on my... Alright, so I... For whatever reason, that negative two is a weird little dead zone where... You could get a, they could uh, step in. But off of a jab, it's a consistent sidestep blow-up tool. Negative two, you can't do it there either. So you might have some luck if you go to your left. 
you might. But if you sidestep against Steve up close, don't swing. Unless you're really confident in the fucking read of some sort. Yeah, see? You get the inconsistency here off of that. And off the jab. Oof. That's weird. Oh man, okay. It's just inconsistent, but negative two is that sweet spot. I forgot to put him at negative three. Uh you've been relearning Miguel, playing attack two, but I also want to learn some Steve too. Yeah, Steve got a lot going on. Steve's cheap, motherfucker. Steve is a cheap motherfucker. Real good shit. The first thing I can tell you that'll be like a good uh, noob killer for Steve, right? Is two one was it two one? Two one it's a peekaboo. 2-1 forward into peekable or 2-1 back into flicker. Because that shit is plus on block. So, it's real. Like, sure, the other transitions could be nuke killers too, but you're playing around without without frame advantage. And for, for destroying noobs, you want frame advantage. That's like the best way. Strings that are tight, that they can't mash through, and frame advantage traps. That's what kills noobs. So, 2-1 back or... Two one forward. That's the juice. And if two one hits them, they really can't do shit. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You can start with that. Yeah, Nin is a Nin is a bit of an old man. Nin is clearly like a legend, but I vote when I hear stories about him, I he said some funny shit before. He sounds kinda like a whiner. And, and I'm not saying that just now because of the Steve thing. I've just heard stuff before where he like he gets mad like there was a story where during the Tekken Six days he told somebody this might have been I, I might have heard this on Aris's podcast actually before Tag Two came out I, I remember hearing Aris talk, talk about this uh, it might not have been Aris but I remember hearing somebody I'm assuming Aris talk about this Nin used to complain about me getting all the attention when he was saying that he won more tournaments he was like I don't get why this guy gets the fucking <laughs> gets all the attention nobody talks about me. <laughs> And I was like, even if you're right, that's like a GM move. That's a fight. <laughs> Fighting GM was like, nah, I don't get any respect. Nah, I want all these majors. I want like 30 majors. I don't get any respect. That's kind of how GM sounds, if you don't realize. Um, and I was like, wow. <laughs> that kind of maybe changed my perception of how what Nin is. Where it's like, oh, he's a fucking human being too. They're not robots. Because uh, Ni actually shows way more emotion these days. Maybe because now he's losing. But when I used to see him up on stage and, the, and before he started to look old like he does now, he would just be there with this the most deadpan fucking face, never change expression, nothing. He would give you nothing. And I don't know if he was doing that intentionally or he was just focusing so hard on the game that he naturally was like not giving you any sort of impression. But he legitimately looked like a robot. All these other Korean players we've seen now, they clearly they have emotions on their face. You could you could read their emotions when you look at their face. Back in the day, uh, me, I don't know if I said Nin, but I meant me. Me, never a fucking emotion, just sitting there. And he just, he just fuck your shit up with fucking Brian Tong cancels in your face. It's like, whatever. It's like I'm sitting on the toilet, taking a dump. Same difference. Natural, baby. Alright, so we went through the back one stuff. It's good shit. Yeah, no, Steve is good. He's not as good as he was when they first buffed the shit out of him, obviously. But this, I was talking about this, uh, Kayo, when I started this stream. This changes the way I approach fighting, the way I used to fight Steve. This changes everything for me. Like, I, I'm having a lot of trouble. I haven't fought too many Steves, but the last two I fought, the first one was Bloodhawk, who doesn't main Steve. He was just fucking around with him. And it's Bloodhawk, so he'll push my shit in regardless of who he uses, right? And then I fought Romeller, Romeller, I don't know how to pronounce his name, who's like new to Tekken, playing on his keyboard and shit like it's a hitbox. I've, I ran into him a couple of times in rank, then he beat me up, and I was like, fuck, I don't know how to approach find this character, because knowing that this shit hits me in certain situations makes me brain for fart, completely. And then I, like, do nothing. I don't I don't block punish, I do nothing. I just completely freeze up, and he's like, I don't know how to fight this character now. I don't have Martyrs down four to carry me through this matchup. You know, I can't rely on spacing because this shit will clip me all day if I try to space and do like a low, do a, a high crushing low because that shit will just hit you. Even though the range is kind of whatever on this, it's like okay, 
the point is the hitbox goes so low that before you would backdash do something like this, right? You would backdash do something like this. And then his old up forward too, where he would jump and swing upward, would just whiff all fucking day over those kinds of high crushing lows. Now, if you stick a button out, that shit just punches you in the fucking arm or the leg, and you, he'll get a juggle. Cause it does a bounce effect. Like if I were just a test right now, I don't know. Let me see. Um, if I were just to record, jab into that, right? I'm not even going forward with it. Let's see what happens. All right. Well, that's not. It actually comes out pretty fast, so it's hard to test. Um, yeah, and that low is. Uh, so you see, it whiffs, right? Relatively. I can't even start the low animation. It was easier to test with Marta because his low was 14 frames. That's why That's why it was so good. So I don't really have a good example with Steve to test this to show you what I'm talking about. Point being, this has a very... I'm like with punishing. That's why I'm getting it. That low is not, it's not fast enough. Point being, if I had like a fast low to show you, you'd see what I mean. Like a generic down four or something. He blows that shit up all day with that fucking move because it sticks out so much. How about if I do one soon? Like, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like if I did this exact situation, that backdash into it like that, if this were Tekken Tag 2, he would whiff. He would whiff. He would swing upward, and then the Steve player would start fucking cursing out because it whiffs. And then, oh, Steve sucks, blah, blah, blah. So whatever, I gotta get used to block punishing that shit when I fight against this character now. <coughs> That and uh, this move, uh, I used to be better at seeing it. Now, I don't know if they made it faster. It still seems low at 26 frame startup, but I have trouble uh, seeing it now. Uh, right, so anyway, back two is next. So this is his 17 frame block punisher. It also is a pretty decent, I don't know if it's a proper high crush. Oh, it says tech cross, so I guess it is. I couldn't tell if it was a high crush or it was just him leaning back swing blow style, but... No, that's a proper ass high crush. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Take that back. <laughs> He's ducking highs for like... Alright, so he instantly ducked for a second. For well, a few frames. Because the difference is three frames here. I'm doing a jab, he goes under. I do, Let me do a 12 frame high now. Yeah, 12 frame high, he goes under. 13 frame high, get fucked. So, I don't know if that's just, if that's a proper high crush. Or if it's not a high crush and back one just has a beefy hitbox. Either way it goes, he is, uh... He, he does seem to get hit by highs before he, uh, swings. Maybe not, I don't know, I'm trying to time a jab here. There you go, yeah, see? So he's only high crushing for a bit, but you could actually still have a window to interrupt them. So if you're a Steve player that you've been and you've been like jabbed out of that or hit with a high out of that, that is why. The the high crush properties do not last until he until right before, you know, they run out before he swings. So he's actually open to get punched in the face. Uh, try to pick up Steve. I can stand cancel well enough with him to get wait, you can't or it can? Wait. But I can wait. Oh, let me let me read this again. Tried to pick up Steve, but I can. I'm assuming you meant can't. <laughs> Stands cancel well enough with him to get any good confidence. I'll probably try him again when my fundamentals are better. Ah, uh, it's not a fundamental thing. Steve's stance cancels are unique. So you know, if you really like the character, he's just, you just got to put more work to learn his juggles. That's just the way it is. Steve's fundamental to use him on the fundamental level, outside of getting a combo conversion, like movement wise, it's not too hard. Where it starts to get weird is he has like two important moves that are unsafe on block unless he stands cancel. Back one and down forward two. And I talked about it earlier in this video. You need to down forward two, you need to duck cancel and then uh, down forward two, forward three, forward plus three or forward plus four. 
to go to ducking, and then you have to cancel the ducking. It's a block. And that's how you make that save. Back one goes to flicker. So you have when you hold back. So you have to hold back and a duck to cancel the flicker. And that makes that save. Of course, you can also just go to flicker and keep swinging. And if they try to swing, they're going to get countered. There's that too. What's up, great loud mouth? Let's go. Um, you gotta get rhythm. Yeah, Steve definitely seems like a rhythm based character if you want to execute him. You're gonna think it a lot of work. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you've been practicing Eddie. Yeah, Eddie's a weird one. He's on the list, so maybe next. I don't know. Yeah, Eddie looks better than he did in Tekken 2 in the sense that, in Tekken Tag 2, sorry, in the sense that while he did lose the back one for counter hit, which was such a big thing in Tag 2, obviously, clearly, and it does hurt to lose that, obviously, because it's such a fucking bullshit move, right? Uh, he has a lot of good tools still, and a lot of new good tools, right? The one off the top of my head, first of all, they made down forward 2 safe, so you don't even need to space it like you had to before to make it safe, and that's still an equally dangerous move. Uh, and they gave him the fucking armor out of the handstand, so punishing him gets even more weird in certain instances. Still can't do the movement exercise I suggested the other day, the one where I need to dodge and kind of leans forward. Alright, I'll show you right now. What character were you using? This is actually good for everyone watching right now. If you want to test uh, a good backdash cancel, this might not be universal though, because not all backdashes are equal. Great loud mouth. What character are you using? to try to test it. Nimelo. Nimelo way. I'm trying Jin. So let's see. Jin's movement is kind of whatever. So let's see if he could do it. Something's tight. This is from um, Tekken 6 P uh, the 3DS version. Lotus Hall. I like this one. Kind of wish you put into jukebox mode. No love for 3DS. So, what Great Loud Mouth in the chat is talking about is this I suggested, right? Recording, jab, sidestep three. Oops. Sidestep three without canceling it. And then block. So, I suggested this as an exercise, right? First of all, you want to get as close to her as possible when you block that jab. That's step one. Step two, when you block the jab, you want to backdash, full backdash, cancel, and then backdash again. It should make that whiff. That's step two. When you make it whiff, step three, practice your whiff punishing against that. It's going to be dependent on your character because you're going to be very far away. And she does recover fairly slow. And that's a key scrubby ling move that you're going to want to punish. See? If you don't get two, if you don't get one full backdash cancel, clean, and then... A second full backdash, you're gonna get hit. I got hit, so it's not hard. Oh, Jin with punch. There you go, he was punch with that. Oops, I fucked up. Of course you could block it still, but it's just to, it's just to get the the backdash cancel good. See what I'm saying? I'm playing on the Itoki uh, Omni. Itoki Omni. Oops. Of course, here it's easier. This is why I'm saying you want to block it from um, cl up close to jab. If you block it from max distance, you're gonna, you know, you don't have to do shit. You want to block this up close and then get it. And then uh, the more the, the more often you can do this properly, the better your your backdash cancel is gonna be. This is something I came with on my own. This is like me theory, really, in theory. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you there's other people doing this, you know. It's, it's quite difficult. It seems like you have almost like a small frame window to do it. I bet you Gigas can't do this. <laughs> Jin's backdash is kind of whatever, so it's fucking really hard. 
There you go. There you go. I was getting this better with Dragon Ball too, so uh, Jin's uh, backdash could be kind of shitty. Let's see if Gigas can do this. I bet you he cannot. Poor Gigas would have to block punish. I bet you uh, Liza probably cannot do that, or Kuma. This is like a your mileage may vary kind of thing. Oh uh, yeah, so I'm using the K JDCR stick. Itoki Omni. Except mine, the down switch is fucked up. I feel like I show this once every video now, so you can see, uh, show this little, little fuck up on my stick. <laughs> that I always show up. Uh, pad is easier in my opinion. My movement was at its best on pad. On, uh, second DR for PSP, when I broke in my PSP pad, it was the best I've ever moved. And, uh, when I eventually broke in my PS3 stick, or pad, excuse me, um, my movement got pretty good at tag too, and then that pad fried and stopped working, and now we'll have to break in another pad. So anyway, when I shake the stick around, you'll notice that he's really only going down, because my down switch is fucked up. Secondly, when I make him crouch, I am not touching the stick, yet he is ducking, because my down switch is fucked up. But the moment I made it, you know, the moment I aligned the stick, all of a sudden, <laughs> he's standing, huh? But when I go down, and I just kind of poke the stick down a little bit, ducking look it up so this has been infuriating for me because there are times where I will duck a high and go for a while standing move whatever right like a while standing two while standing one and I would get a crouch jab or a full cross two or a full cross three because it would still be registering down I have to order a replacement The stick is good. The stick is actually quite is great. Out of the box, it was fucking amazing. I, for whatever reason, my down switch just fucked up on me real quick. I don't know what. Maybe I got a defective part. You know, everyone else that has ordered this stick, I've heard nothing but positive things. So maybe it's just my fucking fat sausage fingers, gorilla hands over here fucked it up. I was too rough with it. I don't know. I don't think that's the case. I think I just got a defective stick, or maybe it's a combination of the two. I don't know. So let's see if Gigas can do this shit, right? That's not size of three. Man, hearing this song just makes me want to load up Persona 5 right now. Imagine Gigas could do this shit, that'd be sick. <laughs> no, look at him, he goes nowhere with his back dash. <laughs> Gigas has a hot kick, by the way. Yeah! <laughs> he can't even punish that with it, though. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Oh, she, <laughs> she went under it. Oh, he's so shitty, Gigas. <laughs> Not only does she go under it, she still trips his ass for a fucking juggle. That's too good. Yeah! Not even delayed hot kick. He does have the delayed hot kick. Uh, he could do it there, but his built in bootleg hot kick is no good. Say that one. That was trash. But delayed hot kick is great. Yeah, Gigas. 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 I can't even talk. Stuttering. Gigas. 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 Definitely cannot backdash away from it. So. You want to use this little exercise, your mods may vary. Still, if your character can do it, it'll be a solid way to get, you know, get familiarize yourself with that backdash and being ready to with punish when you do the backdash cancel. Because uh, one common uh, problem, one common mistake that people make when they backdash cancel is they don't with punish. They just backdash cancel to get away and you do nothing with it. And I understand, I do that too to this very fucking day. I make that mistake all fucking day long. It's not natural to, for me to like backdash cancel and the moment I see something, input whatever it is, you know, backdash cancel, boom. But I'm getting there because I'm trying to force it into my head while I'm playing. I missed a lot of chat here. Let me see. Can you do a back dash cancel with back back down? Ping Kong, yes you can! Thank you for bringing that up. I gotta like, cut out this part of the stream separately when I upload it to my YouTube. By the way, I upload all of my shit to my YouTube downstairs. If you wanna take a follow, I've looked at a bunch of characters already. Let me show you why I think that is important. So you might have heard Aris say, oh, I don't like to play uh, back to characters because of, you know, whatever, right? Because of the back dash canceling. 
That's true. It is harder. Even with this trick that I'm about to show you, it's still pretty hard, right? Well, I'll shake in, I guess. So. I'm going to load up here. So the interesting thing about this game, one of the ways that... Uh, uh, they made uh, backdash canceling. It might be the only way that they made backdash canceling easier. Is that you no longer lose your auto guard when you backdash? What does that mean, Manny? Well, let me show you, friend. So I'm gonna block this jab and then backdash, right? So right now I'm backdashing. I'm letting go of the stick. If I did this in tag two, that kick would hit me. You would lose auto guard in tag two when you backdash. That's why you had to hold back during your backdash to block. And uh, that would be a common mistake people would make when learning backdash cancel because they wouldn't hold back and they would make a uh, they would constantly be doing a vulnerable backdash and just getting hit by long range mids all day. What does that mean in regards to backdash cancel? Well, let me tell you. If I just hold down. If you look right now, I'm just holding down. I'm not holding down back. You also have auto guard from crouching just by holding down. So what does that mean for a backdash cancel? It means that you will still get the cancel if you tap down, a perfect down input. Instead of a perfect down back input, diagonal down back. You will still get a backdash cancel and you will still have the window where you would block a low. Now for me, that makes it easy. Oops, see? That makes it easier to avoid the accidental quarter circle back if you go down. If you go down back, you have to, uh, it's, it's at, for me, I find it harder to avoid the quarter circle back input because you're looking for this down back diagonal thing. If you're on like a square gate, it might be easier to find the diagonal to do it perfectly. But, you know, I don't play sway characters. I've never in my life, like, played any sway characters. Like, I play like Paul the fuck around. But I never learned Paul, like, you know, I don't know shit about Paul. As you can see, I'm getting it relatively consistently. Because this is a circular gate, so I don't have to think about where the, my mentally think about where the diagonal I put is. I just gotta go down. As long as I go down, I'm good. So, there's that. I hope I made that clear. Uh, what's going on in the chat here? Another work you gotta do it on pad and just watch your hands. Yeah, you just gotta make it like natural. Uh, no problem, glad I can help. Glad I can help. You know, same thing happens with both sides. Also, remember when you're practicing this stuff, this movement stuff, you wanna do it on two piece sides. See, I have a lot more trouble doing it on two piece side. Cause I never really play on two piece side, which has actually been a big problem for me. I've been spoiled by that side select shit when you play uh, when you play against other people, and you can play always always on one piece side. I've been spoiled by that. So. I, I'm no good on the two piece side. For, for this specifically, for a regular backdash cancel, I'll do the bootleg one, the quarter circle back one all day, which means I'm more I'm more vulnerable to mids for a longer period, but then you're than a clean one. But still, it still comes out way better than you know, like if I um, if I switch to Shaheen right now. See, I got no problem doing it. <laughs> Cheat when the cat collects Shaheen. Let's do one Shaheen combo. Anyway, that's that. Side select spoils me, man. Yep, duck knows. Side select spoils you. And it's funny because it depends on what kind of stick you're playing. Frequently, especially like Mashima players, they'll prefer the two-piece side. Because it's easier for them to wave dash on a two-piece side on a Japanese stick. For whatever reason, that's just the way it is. It was that way for me, too, when I when I play on Japanese stick for a bit. Korean stick, one-piece side, no fucking problem. Two-piece side, gets a little weird. I feel like I should stop with Steve at this point. Because I'm only... I said I was going to, like, stop <laughs> at, a, at a few moves in. But, um, fucking whatever. I'll, I'll look at, like, one or two more moves. Just so I can naturally cut this off for a future part two on the YouTubes. Ah, Leibase. What's up? How you doing, amigo? 
I've been at it for like two and a half hours. I can't tell right now because the Twitch shit, the dashboard is not working properly. The dashboard is not functioning properly. Well, duck, yeah, I guess if you're playing on the same screen, that matters, duck. Alright. So we're looking at back two. So you're supposed to be able to convert off of this. I don't know how. And it's supposed to be really hard to do. At least consistently. But it's important if you're learning Steve, it's important to convert off of this because that's your 17 frame punisher. And it's also a high crush, so you might hit it generally. There's no there's no sample combo here, unfortunately. I don't know if there's any cancel here, is there? Um. Oh, he ducks? No, he recovers and then ducks. Ah, Well, he gets that. I don't know how he tail spins though. But he could pick, he picks up a two one. Pick up off of that and get a full combo. Sonic, I mean, he's supposed to get some sort of like, it's not a great combo, but he has a combo off of it. I don't know how to get the tail spin. All I got was that string. It's gotta be there's something else to it. Anybody know? Yeah, this is a Kuma's theme from Street Fighter Alpha 2. Uh, Alpha 2 Gold specifically, which kind of remixes the themes a bit. I don't know if this is like, uh... <sighs> Alright, nobody really knows. Um... Hmm. Alright, well, it's definitely a way. Down forward 1 2. No, down forward 1 2 all work. Uh, oh, go you! <laughs> Does he have a tail spin at a down forward one? Move list. That's what I'm looking for. Down forward one, down forward one. Alright, let's see. Telespins. What do you got, Telespins? So, ducking two. That's not. No, no ducking, no ducking. Peekaboo, down forward one, two. Flicker, one down one. Okay. Flicker, one down one. So. Man, that's the only way to go into Flicker. Hmm. This is. I feel like I gotta at least show one one sample combo off of this because this is an important launcher, or am I think? want to flicker out of it. Oh, that is flicker. Wait, is it? Oh.
I think I got something. Oh, maybe I don't. Damn, that range is shit. Alright, let's try that. There it is. There it is. Yes, it's a Sakura Steam. Alright, alright. Alright, we got it. We got something. I'm not gonna say this is easy. Uh, but it's not as hard as I thought. Let me make sure it's guaranteed. We have tech on, we have get up on, right? All right, and then I don't know what he does after that. So what I'm doing is back to forward two one, right? You do forward two one, and then you hold back to go into flicker, and then flicker one down one. So forward two one, back one down one, and that's how I'm getting the tail spin there. And then that would floor break, for example, 52 damage. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's something off of that. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's a good start, I guess. Let's do Raw Running 2. Fuck it. And while we're in 2 in that situation, we'll do one of those, uh, hard knockdowns where if they don't hold back, you'll get a guaranteed follow-up. Yeah, Lion Hearted Boy, what's up? Uh, the VODs will be uploaded down in the YouTube, downstairs. I got a link. Along with all my past character stuff. Uh, I took some big detours in this one. Can you Sonic Fang after the tailspin? I'm gonna assume you can. Let's see. Uh, forward 2 one, right? Yeah. Only one more damage than a while running too, though. Although, it seems like it, <clears throat> it keeps him close enough that you can still chase him down. Right? I mean, uh, forward, forward, two works also. But that damage is kind of shit. Ah, oh, while running too kind of whiffed. Who's hype for Abigail? <laughs> um, one down one. There you go. Right in the balls. Right in the kneecap, at least. Alright, well, anyway, back to is uh, punishable. Negative 12. I don't know. How, uh, the funny thing about Abigail is I keep hearing that name, and it's not a name that I hear very often. But, uh, but uh, at least out in the wild, right? That's the name of my niece, though. So I keep hearing Abigail. I'm like, man, it's, it sounds awkward to hear Abigail and see that character. Like, what the fuck? That's not what I associate Abigail with. So yeah, negative 12. Oh, negative 13. Yikes. So that's negative 13. So you want to be careful when you swing in a neutral situation with it. But it looks like it crushes. Quite well, right? Not now, back to Get on. Did I is this what I tested before? Oh yeah, it is. It is the one where he's leaning back and uppercutting. Yeah, so you can, you can interrupt him with a... With a high. 14 frames in this specific case, so he would eat an electric if you tried in that situation after a jab. Remember, if you're Steve and you're wondering why did I get hit with a high out of this, it's like I said before. His uh, hurt box comes up before he attacks. So he, he's still open to get hit with highs. Uh, what's up, Shay? Uh, I might pick Steve back up and try again. Hey, Shay, you might know. What's the uh, best combo off of Steve's back two? Because all I got was uh, this forward two one pick up, flicker one down one into some bullshit. I feel like you would know. I mean, play who you feel like you have fun with. Like, if you're interested in the character, just, you know, it, it might be harder to get good with the character, but if you're having fun, what does it matter? You know, a winning uh, winning is the only way to have fun. At least, you know, depending on who you are. Some people hate losing, so whatever. You're going to lose a lot at first. I still lose a lot, and I've been playing these fucking games for years. Um, well, anyway, I'll go back to looking up more combos and have a response. Uh, back one plus two, punch bearing, has a built-in follow-up. It only absorbs one hit, higher mid. 
But the thing is, it's unlike Feng's parting clouds, fucking Wing Chun bullshit, who which absorbs two hits and he automatically attacks. Steve, it absorbs one hit, but it stops you, so you don't have to worry about multiple hits anyway. He does like a parry to get fucked up, and then he gets the uppercut. I don't know if he gets anything for free after that though. Uh, apparently his parry follow-up is negative on blocks. I didn't even know you could block it. I guess you could delay it, maybe. Uh, crumple stun, and on counter hit, his parry follow-up launches. That's interesting. Man, why is that such a tight window for that? Ah, so you could delay enough that they block it. Oh, that picks up. That doesn't. I don't know if you could follow that up with anything. Yeah, he recovers too slow. Oh, two. Alright, that's it. I mean, I guess that's all that he gets. Oh, alright. Uh, Shay, what is the uh, combos off of back two? That's what, that was my question. Like, um, I know how to pick up with forward two one. It's a flicker one, down one. Wow, it's with me now. Oh, also, I'm noticing that I'm starting to lag, the FPS lag on the top left. That's been happening to me. I can't play in window mode when I actually play against other people and shit. I have to play in full screen mode now because I get FPS shots more frequently now. Yeah, because Eddie takes work to be good with. Dude, I actually got de uh, demoted by this really shitty Eddie player when I was playing as Gigas. And I got so pissed. <laughs> it was the dumbest shit. Because uh, I didn't know what to do as Gigas against stuff. Even though shit been obvious. It's like down 3-2 against Relax. You know? But I just kept brain farting. I, you know, I just wasn't used to it. It's just such a unique matchup that even the dumbest shit you'll lose to if you're not like... Oh, aware of what to do with your character. I'll tell you right now, I bet you Steve would use like this against Relax. Or maybe just Sonic Fang will hit Relax. Maybe. I don't know. Just a guess. If anything, Don one just you can not want him out of relax, you could stomp him on the floor without <laughs> relax. Alright well Okay back to flicker. Oh back to goes to flicker? Oh, shit. The flicker, you have to manually go into flicker. Let's see, flicker, one down one, all right? Down forward, one, two, one, back. So flicker, one, albatross, two. Yeah, I don't know how to do the flicker, albatross, cancel. All right, I get, I get what you're saying, though. All right, what is it? How you do the flicker? How you do the albatross cancel out of flicker? I'll go back to it. Well, anyway, I'm gonna go back to the list here. I'll get back to that later. Uh, up forward one. This is a good way to get kind of right in their face with plus five. But you can still backdash the down back three, so maybe don't rely on that too much. But still, good move. If you don't want to go super risky with your up forward two to crush the low, 
is another okay option. This is what he kind. This is what Steve Prince kind of had to use before, right? Um, it is negative six on block though. So if you get a block, you're kind of stuck. You won't be following it up. Yeah, up forward one is a good round under two. That's true. It comes out fairly fast. I mean, uh, uh, well, not as fast as it looks, but 19 frames. I had a block. The mid horns. It seems the uh, track step fairly well. I can't step it. I can only walk it. I know. Gigas can grab everybody out of uh, out of uh, jump state. That's not a uh, that special. And you do get the rear if you sidewalk around him. You can also just float him with a jab, go into juggles. Uh, yeah, that's a solid move. What am I looking for? Up forward two. This is the fucking annoying shit right here. So I talked about this already. Negative 14 on block. I don't know how this tracks, but this move changes the Steve matchup dramatically. I went over this already, but his old up forward two, he swung at fucking fireflies up in the air instead of swinging down at his opponent when he jumped, so it would whiff all day. This shit, though, really good. He doesn't move forward very much and doesn't have that much range, but that hitbox going downward is fucking nuts. It's a really, really good hitbox. Really, really, really good. Dude, I've seen this fucking move hit people behind Steve before, right? I don't remember who it was, but some character got behind him and he just said, it was like a slide. It was one of the running slides. I don't know if it was a capo slide or something, but Steve jumped over it in slow motion and just bam right in the fucking head when he went under him. That's how good this hitbox is. <sighs> can you do up? Yeah, of course. You can do a neutral jump with it. But up to. You go, um, you cannot do up back to though. You can do up to the neutral jump with it to, and to make a, 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 room, a move with very little range have even less range if you want. <laughs> or you can go up forward to, to go forward a little bit. Okay. That's up to oops. Oh my god. Up to right? And then up forward to. And then whatever the jungle is, uh, you know. I don't know what the jungle is, but whatever the jungle is. So whatever. Let's see if there's a sample combo on that. That's a good yeah, you're gonna want a placeholder for that kind of move. Until you learn the real good combos. Okay, good. So we got a sample combo right here, right? Oh! oh I know you can do that. Peekaboo goes into ducking, huh? Ooh. I hit one. Oops. I feel like I see Steve players make this mistake quite often. I've, I've seen that exact thing happen before. <laughs> Man, that's actually kind of hard. Supposed to be canceling that faster, I think. Like that. That looks fast, right? It's a rhythm thing. So you have to have some good timing. Oh my god, now getting not coming out at all. 
funny how that works, right? Why does it feel weirder when I hit him with it? When I hit it with it out of the air, it feels weirder than when I'm hitting it with it standing. It feels weirder to time. It's an albatross. Doesn't he have a flicker one jab cancel to albatross? Or am I mistaken? And that was something else. Steve is hard. I try to mash. You can't really mash this. It's not a cancel though? I thought it was a cancel. Well, whatever. That nah, look good. Time is very up. Oh my god, this is so hard. <laughs> Because you see how easy it is to do that cancel like this, but in a juggle, it's so hard. Like, if I had to come out with that timing, it would clearly work in the juggle. But it doesn't happen when I do it in the, in the when I do it in the juggle. See? He gets stuck in the stance way longer. Find an easy fucking thing for this until you're used to doing the harder shit with Steve. Oh, look at that. There you go. This is something easy. <laughs> Figure that. Save that shit for later. Don't go crazy. You'll get stuck in that combo vortex. Down forward two, one, two, flicker one, down one, and then do other bullshit. Forward three. This is like uh this is like your tall thing your opponent move. <laughs> this isn't real, this move. 36 frames. So if you're fighting against Steve, don't like get mesmerized by this move. The uh, mix-up for this move is if you're just looking for the jump, it's this really slow ass hop kick of his. Uh yeah, don't really, you know. You can pretty much OS it. Just wait for him to fall down to that low parry. And you can blow that move up. There's no real mix up there. Right. 
Let me do it off of a jab, so. There's a difference in the animation. And not only that, I could input the low parry late and uh, I'll always block uh, fuzzy the low parry late into the jump and, and input down back, uh, sorry, input, uh, input block right after, back. And uh, if he does the mid, which comes out faster, I will block it. That's what seems to be the case, I don't know. Maybe the mid comes out slow. I don't know. Something about this makes that OS work because it was working for me before. See? If I input the down back late enough, I'll block the mid. That's what I'm saying. Not fuzzy. Yeah, that's what it is. It's not a fuzzy. I'm just tapping a down back late enough so I'll block the mid, but early enough so I'll, um,. I'll uh I'll still get the uh early enough so I'll low parry the low, but late enough so I'll block the mid. That's what I meant to say. I'm fucking brain farting over here, sorry. Anyway, I pray that mid is uh is unsafe. Let's see. Alright, that's a negative fourteen, right? Yeah, it's negative fourteen. Uh <sighs> <laughs> the I don't respect your reaction to moves. That it's not only that, like uh, Shay. This is one of those like like a random ass unblockable where they got you so frozen up that it's like I could throw wherever the fuck I want out right now, and I'm gonna prove it. It's one of those mind game things. Even if you have good reactions, so there's just those times where you just get stuck staring, like oh I don't know what to do because there's just so much shit coming at me. That typically happens when you're not used to the fucking matchup. Huh. <sighs> Step on your shoes. I don't know about that red and black color the other Steve is wearing. It looks like some bootleg ass pro wrestling shoes. Anyway, he does have the up forward 3 2 to go with it, which does more damage than down back 3 2. A lot more damage. And this by itself is plus 9. <laughs> so if you want to get a low with a lot of plus frames on here, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Ugh, and then do the stop right after. <laughs> uh, and then up 4 4 was the next move on the list, which we, which I just showed. No reason to check the tracking on that shit. Whiff City. So next we got another key move. This is a really good move for Steve. But it's not safe. Boom! Right? Uh, I don't know if he gets anything free. I think he used to get a down back 2 free a long time ago. And they took that away, I think. It was like in DR when they gave him this move. Uh, I don't know if he had it in a 5.0. But he used to get a Dom back 2 for free. Now, let's see if he still does. Oh, he might. He might. He's hitting me before I get up. Yeah, Dom back 2 still looks free after that. Yeah. He's catching me before I recover from getting up. I start the get up animation, but I can't block it. And I can't hold back. Obviously, you're not going to wake up kick either. You know, you try to wake up kick. He's going to counter hit you, and then he'll get another down back two or some shit for free. Oh, Shay, uh, what does Steve get for free off of a counter hit down back two? Does he get anything for free? Or is it just good okay? Four four two is good. Wait, uh, it hits grounding. Ah, oh, oh, is that only if they try to get up though? Because four four two doesn't hit grounding, does it? Man, this is a weird thing to input. Yeah. 
It doesn't hit grounded. Or it does. <laughs> it does hit grounded. Okay. <laughs> you just gotta get a dash in on that shit. Yeah, uh, this might be a dependent, a body thing. Because he only does it when he's like there, like really point blank. And I feel like if I dash that much, I'd be able to escape it. I don't know, maybe that's just me. That was a bit deeper of a dash. Okay, so this hits me grounded, right? Let's see if I can escape it. Uh, yep, yeah, see? So if you can, it's fucking hard as hell to do. At least against a character like Steve, who's kind of skinny, I think. Not quite like tiny skinny, but he's a bit skinny. But maybe I guess like Gigas or Kuma shit, you wouldn't even need to like dash and beat. If you want the easy mode follow up, down back two seems to be the easy mode follow up, right? And it's only three damage less, was it? Yeah, 16 instead of uh, 19, right? Instead of 19. So three damage less without having to risk fucking up your execution on a move that is unsafe on block, right? I mean, it'll cover you if they try to get up, so. So you're right about that. If you did it instantly, at least. Uh... Cross cancel down one plus two. Oh, you don't have to cross cancel. You recover standing. Okay, there you go. Forgot about down one plus two. Does that knock down a counter hit? What's down one plus two? It's the same move as down one. Uh, 442 is negative 13, which we don't have. We have Wild Man only, right? Oops, wrong way. Ha! Ha ha! The safe option if you don't want to come into a full on Wild Man combo. Does force cross, so you're coming up with a wall standing move. All right, I'm getting hungry too. I gotta work out. I'm getting too flabby, man. Look at that shit. I can't have I can't have muscles to be this fat. It's the summertime, damn it. I think it's about time to call it for Steve for part one. Let's see how much do I have left. Oh yeah, Oof. there's a lot here. Look at all these ducking. Ooh, one plus two, what's that? Oh, that's this shit. <laughs> that's easier to do than it used to be. That would be his bit most flat move, right? Ah. Extended ducking. Peekaboo. Man, Steve might be my first three parter, especially since I'm trying to cut these shorter instead of sitting here for like five hours in one shot. I might just make this a part one. I feel like it's a decent place to stop. For now. So what was the last move I talked about? I talked about 442. Good move. And like the tracking, I mean, you don't really need to test the track. I don't know how much natural tracking it has. But it's a forward forward move, which means you can dash deeper to make it track better. Tracks step at least. Okay. All right. Ooh. There you go. So I accidentally showed off what I was about to show here. 
put a little delay on that shit. Dash deeper, you'll nail them for sidewalk. They'll have to change up their timing. I have to explain many times. I didn't know that. So yeah, I'm gonna call it there for now. Three and a half hours. Aris is streaming. If you wanna watch somebody charismatic play some tech end. Hope you guys learned some shit. Like always, I did. 